Here's Art. Here I am. This is Extraterrestrial Radio, and it's open lines tonight. You know what that means. It's going to be trouble, I'm sure. Anyway, who cares? It'll be fun. Listen, we found our own number nine. Well, it's not number nine. We Somebody sent me a picture... I hope he got credit of this artifact on the moon with a big red arrow pointed to it on the moon, on Mars. And I thought, you know, yeah, that's no number nine, but could be a six or a seven, number six or seven. Anyway, it's at artbell.com if you want to go take a look. It is pretty weird. I mean, there is a lot of weird stuff on Mars that you just can't account for unless you say, old Russian mission something like that all right the ghost photographs are starting to post that's right keith is slaving over hot mist (laughs) remember we've got a contest folks a pretty good contest i would say too uh sirius xm's donating a brand new radio and a one-year subscription to sirius xm that's no minor matter and It goes to the person with the best ghost photograph as judged by the audience. All of you. It's all about all of you. You will decide who gets it. Huh. I just figured out how somebody out there could... Anyway. (laughs) Uh, Good luck. Uh, If you've got a good ghost photograph, I mean, we're looking for the best. So send the best. Send it to webmaster at artbell.com. That's where the ghost photographs go. Thousands of them, I hope. Not really, for Keith's sake. Um, Send it to webmaster at artbell.com. And for ghost stories, we are going to have Spooky Matter on Halloween night. And if you have a good ghost story, and when I say good ghost story, I mean I want to be scared. Okay? So that takes a good story, but I have been scared on (laughs) several years. We did this and it it scared me. So anyway, um, send me a little, you know, a kind of encapsulated version, if you would please, of your ghost story in email and uh, include, if you would please, your, uh, a phone number and then spooky matter night. We very well may call you all right now open lines here it is well coming up i i'll define it in just a moment let me get the rest of this in i've got a couple of emails that have me concerned this comes from earl up in montana Art, I was driving through South Dakota yesterday on i-90 between wall drug and rapid city when I started seeing dead cows and horses all over the north side of the interstate, I was driving west toward home. There were dead cattle lined up head to tail along the fence of the interstate like they were walking and all of a sudden just dropped dead. It was kind of like something from a disaster movie. I've been driving truck over 30 years and I've never seen a sight like it. They were also lying in groups dead, an amazing sight. I don't know, Earl. Um, First, I've heard of it. I know there was rough weather up there. Whether that had something to do with it or not, I don't know. But you're right. It's like seeing out of a movie. That's freaky. The nation's economy is on the line. President Obama and congressional leaders grouped inconclusively. <laughs> it, looks like, it looked like it said groped. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the, you know, the, uh, uh, the Republicans leader came out of the White House and uh, along with the other Republicans took a side entrance out the White House and went back to Congress. So we, we don't really know what happened, frankly. The news is taking this as perhaps good news that, you know, 
I don't know, they're not throwing grenades at each other anymore. We'll see. Uh, under pressure from governors, the administration has now said it will allow shuttered national parks to reopen, but only if the states pay for it. <laughs> Sheesh. Oh, what a day we live in, huh? Uh, and then there's this, and I consider this to be a legitimate person who has emailed me. I checked out the name. That's why I consider it legitimate. Art, uh, please don't give my name, but I work for the FDIC. They floated a number of 20 banks failing per weekend if we go into default. I'd love to keep giving inside info uh, if you want, Art. But when I heard they expected 20 failures per weekend and possibly one of the too big to fail banks to fail, I almost felt like making a run myself. And there's more, and I, I won't include it now. I'm opening a channel of communication with this person. But it's, it's really scary, is the word. Scary. They can't be crazy enough to let that happen. Uh, this is from The Anomalist. And by the way, that's theanomalist.com if you want to go and read more. Uh, Robert Hastings shares some of his impressive research on regarding the link between nuclear bases and UFO interference, something I should have asked about last night. You know what? Darn it. Uh, with a collection of interviews uh, with launch officers, and there are launch officers who have witnessed firsthand UFO encounters, indicating a disturbing level of interest in our nuclear power and weaponry. That's a partial read. You can read the rest of it. All right, so here's the deal. Open lines defined. Open lines uh, means open, unscreened lines. That's what I'm about to open up to. There'll be nobody screening you, not that they normally do anyway. When we have a guest here, we screen for now your name, because that way I can call your name and you know it's you. And the fact that you have a legitimate question for the guest and that's it. So they're not really screened. It's just more of a setup. Now it's unscreened. And by that, here's what I mean. When you call, it will ring about 20 times. If I don't pick up during that 20 times, you're going to have to pick it up and try again. We have many, many, many lines. So if you're ringing, you've got a shot. Now what I'm looking for tonight is anything. Anything goes. I don't care. If you're a time traveler, by all means, I want you to call in. Sounds crazy, right, time travelers? Not so crazy, actually. If there are time travelers, the big question is, then where are they? And the answer to that question could well be, well, they're here, and, you know, they're not about to walk into the New York Times and throw down proof that they're a time traveler just doesn't work that way you'd be in you'd be in big trouble big big trouble probably never make it out alive so i understand that they could be in our timeline and not exactly really vocal about it i wouldn't be god i'd love it to be true that there really would be time travelers that time travel really would eventually be possible or, if you think you're the Antichrist, I certainly want to hear from you. <laughs> uh, vampire zombies. Or just plain old peoples. Humans. Whatever's on your mind is fair game. The numbers are simple. I love our number. It is so simple. 855-REAL-UFO. Now, set your mind to rest. It is a free call. We pay. 855-REAL-UFO. Uh, or if you need the conversion number, it's 855-732-5836. Whatever. It's a really, really cool number. Here we go. Expect the unexpected. This is Dark Matter, and you are on the air. 
Hello there. Oh, I know. I, I know what we're going to have tonight. Um, everybody has to turn their radio down as soon as they get on the air. That's very important. Okay, is it me? It, 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 that, see, that's why. Yes, <laughs> uh, it is you. It is. Um, I got a question. Is uh, the one guest you had on your radio show, Linda Moltenhow? Yes. I didn't get a chance to catch her website that she has all her information on. Um, let me think. Because it kind um, of, y'all were talking about Bigfoot. Right. We were talking about Bigfoot. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, I got... I'm sorry, I can't give it to you offhand. I, I'll get it for you. Somebody will, uh... Okay, well, you can just uh, do it send, on the air or whatever. They'll send it, it in a wormhole. Okay, I appreciate it. All right, thanks, sir. Uh, that's all you need? Yes. A website, okay. All right, well, that was easy. Somebody uh, sent it to me in the wormhole. I'm trying to think of it. I've heard it a million times, and it just won't come. You'll get old. You'll see. Uh, hello there, Dark Matter. You're on the air. Hi, uh, this is uh, Benjamin Barron. It is who? Benjamin. Benjamin, how you doing? All right. Um, I... Uh... I used to listen to you. I've been catching a few of your shows, and I've been kind of getting interested in your show lately. Me too. Um, I was listening yesterday, and I was hearing you guys talking about uh, uh, nuclear power and, and energy stuff like that. that, that that's correct, yes. And I was kind of wondering, um, how much energy does like a lightning strike produce? Um. It, it produces uh, a very, very great deal of energy. Uh, however, capturing it and storing it, if that's what you have in mind, is it? Yes. Yeah. Is not so easy. Uh, very high voltage, very high current um, will kill you uh, quite quickly if it, if it gets you. But uh, there's no reasonable way, well, there's a reasonable way to get it, but not store it. That's the problem. All right. I was, you know, driving by all those uh, uh, wind turbines that you see them putting out there in the, in the Midwest out there. Yes. I was wondering if there was some kind of way to, like, make some kind of lightning rod, you know, and put them out <laughs> in the field like they are doing those and, you know, using transformers or something to, to capture and utilize the electrical current from a lightning strike. I think it is a very cool idea. Look... Number one, uh, I don't think you want to use them as lightning rods, although you could have a lightning rod on them, and I'm sure they do have lightning rods on them. Uh, they're not in favor of the wind jennies getting hit, because if the wind jennies get hit, there's a lot of sensitive electronics inside, and so you, you don't want that. By the way, let me stop and tell you a story. I'm sure you've all uh, mostly heard the story of my very large antenna, right? I've got five acres here. And I have a, a large double loop that uh, circles, circles is the wrong way to put it, but uh, uh, encompasses five acres. It's a loop antenna. I mean, it's really, really, this baby is big. There's no question about it on a total of uh, uh, 13 towers. Now, this antenna does something pretty weird, and I'm going to outline it right now because I know it'll be a source of some discussion. This antenna has some strange properties, or maybe not strange, you know, maybe it's, it's normal, but it has a very great deal of voltage on it. And there's a couple things I want to tell you about this. Number one, the voltage is at a minimum like 330 volts. It has components of both AC and DC, which we saw on a scope. We haven't had any real pros out here to test it. I've done about as much testing as I can do. Our local electric company was going to come out here and uh, inspect it, test it, but they never did. It's really got enough voltage and current to knock you on your butt. Here's, here's two other facts about it. Well, three other facts. Number one, that voltage is present on a clear, blue sky, no wind day. I mean, no wind, dead still. I've got a sort of a Frankenstein switch out there that I can throw to ground, and I do, fast. 
So you, you would think there'd be a rise time for that voltage, but there isn't. It's there instantly. You can draw a like quarter inch spark every time you close it to ground. And, and I mean even in rapid fashion. So the rise time is awfully quick. So that's pretty weird, right? And then people said, well, it might be coupling from your local electric lines. I thought, well, that was a reasonable suggestion. So we tested it when we had a power failure. The voltage was still there. In fact, frankly, I view the voltage as more of a bother than anything else, but of course it has possibilities. I have something that takes it to ground, uh, and I did that after I lost about two or three very expensive radios. Well, three, actually. Very expensive. And um, so I have a special apparatus that, uh, that takes it to ground with a choke and some other stuff. Goes to ground. Safely discharged to ground. It's an awesome antenna. Then there's one other thing. And you might want to explain this to me, and I, I probably, it's bad luck for me to be saying this right now, but bear in mind I have 13 towers out there. The, uh, the center tower that I feed is 100 feet, better than 100 feet high. The others are, I think, 76 feet each. This is a big deal. In all the years that I've had this up, you would imagine that I would have been hit by lightning a lot of times. But it's never happened. That's me knocking on wood. It's never happened. You know, we're, we're going out 15, 18 years, whatever it is. I should have been hit a whole bunch of times, but I haven't been yet. Knocking on wood. Now, there is a theory that having this many towers, and they're all grounded, may protect me against lightning. I don't know that to be true, and I could well get hit by lightning, and the whole thing could, um, the whole theory could go up in smoke. It's me knocking again. <laughs> and I tremble every time we have a big lightning storm. But it's kind of interesting, if you go out in the dark, and there's a thunderstorm coming over, you can see a, a kind of a purplish... Um, ball of something, like a plasma, little plasma ball at the top of these towers, and then there'll be a lightning strike, and poof, the little purple balls are gone. So it may be protecting me, and every time I say that, I have to knock on wood because, you know, I, as I mentioned, I tremble every time. So that's what I've got here, that's what it does, and, you know, theories beyond that of what does it? You're welcome to contemplate. Uh, if anybody has serious equipment, wants to come out and test it, it is available uh, to be tested. Call before digging. Hello there. You're on the air. Dark Matter. Hey, this is uh, jo Jojo. Uh, Jojo. To ask, yeah, how you doing? <laughs> I Good. wanted to ask a question. What is your um, belief on, um, like, what is your take as far as, like, if we were to discover life out there, um, would it... Uh, change people's belief on this planet? Like, it would, it like, shatter without the, the belief of people? I guess it would depend on... Well, um, let me turn it around on you. Okay. If, if, if we suddenly discovered aliens, uh, and there was, we simply had discovered that there is life elsewhere, would that bother you? No, I think, uh, I think somebody had to create them, so, I mean... Okay, okay. Yeah, I'm with you. So it wouldn't bother you, right? No. Now, if we discovered life and we met them and we got into a dialogue with them and we found out that they were the ones who had seeded life here on Earth, in other words, um, they are our, our parents, right. would, that bo would that bother you? Yeah, that would. That would yeah, bother me. There you go. <laughs> Well, there you I go. appreciate I, I, it, man. I, I've been a big fan of your show for a very long time, so. Thank you very much for the call, and take care. Yes, I think that's the way it would go for the majority of people. Aliens? Well, okay. If they come down holding the Bible and saying, we too believe in God, okay, aliens, no problem. If they come down and say, look, 
you were seated here just like we were by the Type 3 civilization, three stars uh, to the right, then there'd be trouble. Big, big trouble. Hello there, uh, Dark Matter, and you are on the air. Hello, my name's Larry. I'm calling from northwestern Minnesota. Thank you. How you doing, Larry? Good. I've been a long-time listener, and this is my first time I've ever been able to get through to you. And I have a special request that uh, of a guest that I would like you to interview and have on your show. Well, Paul Bowman, my uh, producer, is surely listening right now. It's his I'd job. Like, I'd like you to, if it's possible, for you to have uh, a person by the name of Gordon Lightfoot. I think he'd be an interesting <laughs> guest for you to have. Oh, I love Gordon. I, I had Gordon on before. You, you missed that, huh? Well, uh, apparently I did. Uh, but uh, uh, perhaps I'll go to a website and find it in an archive and watch it. And I saw him in concert two weeks ago, and I think he's a really interesting man. Well, he certainly is. And um, he certainly does sing well, doesn't he? Uh, I mean, if you actually, I was sort of into that earlier. If you if you stop and you listen to the lyrics of a lot of songs, there is wisdom to be found there. He writes great songs. There's no doubt about that. His words tell a story when he's singing. That's a fact. And it is truly um, poetry in motion. Right. Uh, it certainly is. All right, my friend, I uh, I'll put Gordon down. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. You know who Gordon Lightfoot is, right? No? It's back in the days when people made actual music. What has happened to our music? That's also a good open lines question. If anybody wants to try and answer it. You're kind of on to what I play, right? It's all from, well, the era. When, in my opinion, they made real music. What are they making now? I don't think I'll open that one. Well, you know, I want the language here clean. Hello there, Dark Matter, and you're on the air. Yeah, my name is Ryan, and I'm calling from the Pacific Northwest. Hey, Ryan. Uh, I'd like to say all uh, hi to all of my friends out there that are, that are listening. Um, uh, I wanted to bring aware. Uh, bring. Uh, are, are you sure you have friends out there? Well, I'm, I'm, I think I might do. I might have a couple out there. <laughs> All right. Hopefully. I don't have too many enemies. I wanted to bring uh, up a case. Uh, uh, I know where there is a video um, and uh, a case that occurred where you can, uh, the photographs of this UFO are so incredible that you can you can almost see I'm, I'm a little bit nervous here. Um, uh, I know where there's photographs no, wait, slow of down, actual... Slow down. Stop. Okay. Stop. Take a real deep breath. Just relax. And you're going to tell me about a cool case with cool photographs of a UFO. And I'm really interested. So where would I see these photographs? Well, there was a, a, a video of a UFO over the ocean near Turkey. And uh, the, uh, the video was so clear and so, so close that... Uh, you can see uh, what look like figures standing inside. Mm -hmm. Wow! And um, if you just all right, uh, you got my attention. Where do I see it? Well, I was I was going to say that uh, uh, if you have if you're going to have Roger Lear on as a guest in the future, um, he has the images and he has the videos. And oh, also, uh, if if you search it down, um, um, if, if anybody searches down uh, for Turkey UFO on on the internet, I, there's there's a link to this analysis that this expert did in Chile, and um, and I just wanted to point out to the audience that uh, we, um, we've been looking for these kind of images for a long time. All right, and, I, I have an idea. I have an idea. Why don't you do this for me? Um, go find the link you were just talking about and send it over to webmaster at artbell.com. Now, if you do that, Keith will look for the, uh, uh, the link and put it up on the website. How would okay. that be? Sounds good. Okay, can you do a, that? I'll do that. I got a question for you before I go. Uh, whatever happened to um, the show you did uh, with this mysterious um, Victor who claimed to have uh, snuck a tape out of Area 51? Did anything ever come of that? Did you ever figure out who that guy was, or was it all uh, set up? 
Do you remember that I, show? It, it absolutely was not a setup. Nothing I do on this program is a setup. Everybody thinks, I don't know, uh, JC is a setup. They think that was a setup. Nothing I ever do is a setup. Ever, ever, ever. I would never do that. I'm ever. not saying you did. I'm, 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 I'm questioning if. I yeah. know. No, I have said, no, look, it, it, it was what it was. I never found out anything further. Uh, a lot of people also believe that it was Whitley Strieber that was doing the talking. Wasn't guaranteed. Uh, beyond that, I don't know. You've never heard from him since then? No, sir. Okay. I'll send that But I'm, I'm totally to open to it. Uh, if, if anybody to do with that or any other case wants to get a hold of me, hey, we'll talk. No problem. I'm open for anything. You all should know that by now. Anything at all. Hello there. You're on the air. This is Dark Matter. Uh, Art. Yes. Uh, welcome back. Thank you. Wonderful to hear you again. I'm Anne Marie from New York City. All right. And um, my uh, comment, you had mentioned something about time travel previously. Yes. And um, I think, have you ever heard of quantum jumping? Oh, yes. It's all over the web. Yes, it is. But, quantum um, jumping. I'm wondering, since you had mentioned um, your taste in music, which I can relate to because we're of the same generation, that uh, perhaps... As music evolves, we're actually doing the process of quantum jumping because we find ourselves in a very peculiar uh, sounding uh, kind of music these days. And um, to try to figure it out is beyond me. But um, <laughs> it's really well, I, you know, I look, I, I wonder if we're just not. You know, I know what's said. We're just getting old, right? And because uh -huh. I remember my dad, when I liked rock and roll, my dad said, how can you listen to that trush? And, um, uh -huh. and I did, too, at, at great volume. So, but well, I don't I think it's it. true. I really, I really don't think it's true. I mean, it was good then. It's mostly junk now. Not all, but the majority of it's kind of junk. But yet, right? the music indoors, because every time I hear your show and I hear these songs, I'm always brought back to that time. And and that amazes me. I, I remember clearly as if I was experiencing those moments with every song. Um, I can remember faces and people and, and what we were doing. It's actually like time travel, right? It is, because now some of those people that I was fond of in that time, particularly the 70s, are now gone. God rest their souls, if um, people believe in God. But um, I, I thought I'd just bring that up to you because I, I am fond of, of that period of, of music, uh, that period in the 70s and 60s, too, because I remember the 60s very well. And quick I'm question for you. I, I, I have a quick question for you. If you could time travel and you could go any time, where would you go? When would you go? What would you, really? what, to what year would you go? I would try to go back to 1963 and warn the president, John F. Kennedy, not to go to Dallas. You know, um, thank you very much. That's a good answer. Uh, even, can you imagine trying to do that if you could, if you could go back and you could warn President Kennedy that he was going to be shot in Dallas? Think of how that would go. You'd go back with the sure knowledge that President Kennedy was going to be assassinated. The absolute knowledge that he was going to be assassinated. And you would run, I'm, I'm sure you'd tell the Secret Service. You'd try to get to the very president himself and say, Mr. President, you're going to be shot. You go to Dallas, and you know where you'd end up? You'd end up in a Secret Service holding cell. This is the problem that I see with, with time travel. Now, perhaps you could go to the book repository and attempt to stop it that way, but if you went back and told the Secret Service or tried to tell the president, warn him, whatever, as that lady said, I, you'd end up in a, in a holding cell for sure. <laughs> Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hello. Hello? Hello? Hi. Um, hello. Hello. 
My name is Gus from... Gus, Gus, how old are you? Nine. Nine. All right. Well, welcome to the program. Okay. Um, I was wondering, do you know whatever happened to Dallas Thompson? No, I don't. I'm not familiar with Dallas Thompson. Um... Well, you, I would, you tell me. You tell me who is Dallas Thompson. Um. Well, uh, my friend John, he gave my dad a CD yes. from one of your interviews with right. someone um, named Dallas Thompson, and he was trying to like fly a helicopter to the center of the Earth. Really? Dallas Thompson flying a helicopter to the middle of the earth. Hmm. And he said there was a hole in, in the... Well, I, I, I remember somebody who talked about a hole in the earth. Yeah. I don't remember the flying the helicopter to the center of the earth part, though. Okay. I'll see what I can find out for you, buddy. Okay. All right. Thank you very Thank much. You. Right, bye-bye. See, you see? This is why we keep the language clean here. Quick demo on why. Dallas Thompson. Dallas Thompson. That name really isn't ringing a bell. The, the hole in the earth, uh, actually up way up north, is vaguely familiar. Flying a helicopter into it, not. Hmm. Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Very well, sir. Hey, thanks for taking my call. I've uh, got a couple things to run by you, but I don't know if you have time for both of them. But uh, my name's Scott. I'm calling out of Las Vegas. Okay, Scott. Did you know who Dallas, did, that, uh, do you know who Dallas Thompson is? No, it doesn't ring a bell. Okay. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Um, have you ever heard that a lot of people, I've been wanting to share this, uh, especially with somebody like you. I think your audience would be interested in this. It's mm -hmm. um, prophecy uh, to some degree. Um, did you ever hear that the year 2000, people really, uh, there's a lot of people that believe that the year 2000 wasn't the year 2000. The, that I've actually, heard that, yes. The year, yes. The year 2001 was yeah, I've actually heard that. the year. Yeah, because of a calendar mix-up or something to that nature. I had right. heard that. Also, I had heard uh, that uh, Christ wasn't born in September. He was born in or, uh, December. He was born in September, uh, which makes sense because he was in the womb in December, and Christ was on Earth, essentially, in December. So you see the light, and it may have taken him nine months to get there, the wise men and all that. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and I heard that he was born uh, in September, and uh, it's my personal belief that uh, the real Christmas, the real birthday of Jesus Christ is September 11th, and it was 2,000 years to the day that 9-11 happened, <laughs> and this conflict will go on, in my opinion, for 33 years, paralleling uh, Christ's teaching and Christ's life, uh, but 2,000 years later, it'll wrap up, what, in another uh, 21 years, uh, and uh, on a Friday, and maybe, I don't know, I, I don't know if, it, if, if it'll be that detailed, but that's, that's my opinion. Uh, or not, that's just one thing I had... Uh, had um, thought that it's the beginning of the end and the beginning of the Holy War. And you had to have a major catastrophic uh, occurrence uh, on that day, and that was 9-11. So, Got it. All right. So, he, so the whole thing... Oh, uh, gee, I hate to think that. You know, I just really hate to think that. I'm, I'm willing to go along with... Uh, we've got a whole lot of dates wrong. I'm sure we celebrate 
some things on the wrong days. That kind of information slips away, but I, I really hate to think that uh, those two dates are tied together. But uh, you never know. It's Thompson uh, was, I guess, on with me about 11 years ago. <laughs> 11 years ago. And he did have an idea, I guess, to fly a hell. Nobody knows what's happened to him. Because there's a whatever happened to Dallas Thompson thing out there. But he was apparently going to fly a helicopter into the center of the earth. Now, that idea would take some serious thought because if, presuming there was a hole big enough, and presuming you could get a helicopter, I would think that you would run out of fuel uh, before you ever hit the center of the earth. I mean, way before. And that would be very disappointing. Personal point of view, anyway. I wonder what solution you'd have for that. You're on the air on Dark Matter. Hello. Hi, Art. Yes. My name's Paul. I'm a truck driver from the Northwest, uh, from the Seattle area. I happen to be in Portland today, but later, uh, earlier this afternoon, I was uh, near Mountain Home, uh, Idaho. Yes, sir. And I happened to witness what appeared to me to be an ICBM launch. I, oh, my I, mean, it just, I came up over the horizon, shot up in the sky, accelerated like nothing I'd ever seen before, and shot across the sky to the east. I don't um, suppose you got any photography, did you? Oh, no. Oh, Lord, I wish I did. Uh, but uh, I called a, a Boise television station to see if they had any information. And, right. uh, of course, he was as shocked to hear about it as I was to see it. So, uh, so as far as he was concerned, he had no idea about any kind of planned launch. Uh, of course, you know, I had my fingers crossed for a while there, wondering if I was going to hear on the news about something on the other side of the world disintegrating. Right. <laughs> Fortunately, never heard anything like that. So as far as I know, it was probably just a test launch. Um, but you, you'd think that, you know, you know, that they'd informed the local TV station that they were going to do something like that. I must say, that's always been one of my biggest fears. You know, some of the old uh, uh, Armageddon-type movies where you suddenly see all these ICBMs uh, beginning to launch in the West. <laughs> oh, God, that's a scary thought, isn't it? Um, and, and you know, what, you got about, at best, uh, 25, 30 minutes or so, and then it's exactly. my baby. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting to see a, a forest of them start taking off if, uh, oh, if everything God. went awry. But that is just really, a whole bunch of those really, contrails. really, really scary. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I, that's, uh, thank you very much. I, <laughs> uh, you know, we'll look for any confirmation of what you saw. It could have been, who knows what it was, but yes. Those movies where you expect to see them just sprouting out of the earth suddenly. And you know that in, I don't know, 20, 30 minutes, it's all over. I think over the pole, that's about as long as it would take, right? That's what we all live with. Uh, we were talking about that a little bit yet with yesterday's guest. But we all had to live with that. The possibility that at any moment, it could all be over. And there were moments where, well, I was in the Air Force uh, at Amarillo Air Force Base, and I remember picking up the DEFCON phone when they raised the DEFCON level uh, over the Cuban crisis. I was a young airman, and I picked up the, DEF, you know, there was a DEFCON phone at every facility, and I picked it up, and I think all the blood drained out of my face. It was pretty freaky. Hi there, Dark Matter, you're on the air. Yes, um, turn, turn your radio off, please. I just did. Hello? Yeah, I just did. Okay, you're you're on a speakerphone or something. I can't understand what you're saying. Oh, no. Okay. Oh, oh yes, no. Oh. No speakerphones. All right, hold on a minute. I'm hanging. Cell phones we have to live with these days, but speakerphones on cell phones, oh, no. Yeah. Can you hear me now, though? Oh, that's so much better, yes. Okay, all right. Well, this will do. All right. Well, first of all, I just want to say that I've been listening to you off and on for years, 54 years old. And I even remember listening to you when I was in high school, late at night, uh, trying to find you on the AM dial, going back and forth. 
one one station would buy to go out, and I'd have to find you on another station. And I'd listen to half of you uh, part of the time, and then and then when that was over, I'd have to find another station just the part that I missed earlier. The, ah, the good old days, the, yeah, bad old days, they really actually. <laughs> yeah, they really were. Just a couple of things. Um, uh, would like to hear something on the um, shroud sometime. I've, I've heard something here oh, a few months ago. They shroud got of some new, Yeah, that they've got uh-huh. some new stuff about it. I, I don't know anything about it, but uh, just something that I remember picking up on the radio that they've got some new stuff, and I'd like to kind of hear something about that. I uh, believe the provenance of that is, is still in question, right? Uh, They're not sure. And stuff. Uh, seems to indicate that it might not be at all. So See, there you, it'd yeah, just be kind of yeah, just kind of interesting. And I'd also like to hear some stuff about uh, what the Catholics um, have been saying about the aliens and their um, uh, all their work that they've done with um, astronomy. Okay, uh, the Catholics have been um, very open, actually. A lot of cardinals have had things to say, bishops, about the possibility of aliens. I, I must say, if I could time travel, I would surely, my, my visit would be, um, I guess, to the birth of Christ. I would, um, I'm not a particularly, as you all know, religious guy. I'm, I'm just not. But given a choice of places to go, that's where I'd go. I, I would want to see it with my own eyes, wouldn't you? The whole thing. Follow it for as long as I could. Right on through the early years and as he became a carpenter and see it for myself. Witness some of the miracles. Wouldn't that be something? Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hello. Yes, Art. Many Roswells, Tetra Roswells, and uh, 51s from Belgab. I have yes. a couple of spooky stories for you. All right. Um... When I was a kid, about 13 or 14, uh, me and a couple of friends were laying in our, our living room watching a couple of scary movies. And uh, there was a big lightning storm outside. And a big crash happened outside. And in come this big flowing ball that came through the front room window, crossed our heads, and dissipated on the back wall. Ball lightning? Might be. It was pretty freaky. I, I take it nobody jumped up and tried to grab it. Uh, no, we were too uh, in awe of it to uh, do it. Good choice. Yes. And also, uh, when I was a kid, about one, uh, we live in a house over on the south side of town. and One year old? And, yes, one year old. You remember was, when you were one? I don't remember, but I was told by my oh, parents. I see. Okay. Yeah. So, um, the uh, the gas on the stove would turn on at random times during the evening, and the toilets would flush at random times, and nobody was in the bathroom, hmm. and uh, there was a room upstairs that it can be cold as hell outside. And it'd be warm, like 90 degrees. And uh, when it was warm outside, it'd be cold as heck in that room. Well, that's pretty weird. Uh, I'm afraid that if, you know, my gas was coming on by itself, I'd be thinking somebody was trying to do me in. (laughs) Yeah, that'd be a pretty good assumption. But my uh, my my dad and my mom went to Illinois to get some holy water for my very Catholic great grandmother. Oh, really? Yes, and they brought it back to the house. And my grandma on my mom's side took the holy water upstairs and sprinkled on the, sprinkled it on the door frame and said, "If there's any evil spirits in this house, get out." Did it and sizzle? The door, and the door frame shook. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it would have been so cool to see that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you know, on video or something. Usually, it's a person in the throes of uh, uh, being occupied by an evil entity of some sort, and it's usually sort of tossed by the. 
piece, right? When it touches somebody with the devil in there. You're on the air. This is Dark Matter. Hello. Hello, hello. No, you're not. They they got shy and oh, we just missed them is what happened. Hello, you're on the air, Dark Matter. Hi, Art. Uh, Lenny Roswell, see you. Thank you. Uh, my question is, um, is there any update or any word about Mel's Hole? Um, no, none whatsoever. Um, I've got word out, uh, and we're checking. Um, you know, and we're we're sort of checking all the way to Australia because if he's around, that's where he's going to be. So, I can't give you any updates. Okay. Uh, another question: uh, Have you ever, have you, or would you ever interview Travis Walton? And what do you think about his story? I have interviewed Travis extensively. And I think uh, it's a very compelling story, extremely compelling. And I think he's telling the truth. And so the story is what it is. And I, yes, I've interviewed him. Uh, full show interviews. Oh, that'd be great. I'll have to look that up. Um, and one more thing. Have, are you familiar with the psychic Sylvia Brown? Of course, yes. Would you ever interview her? You know, I might. I, I'm not really... Big on psychics. Um, okay. You know, it's so subjective. Um, I, I would like to believe in psychics. I've known a couple that were pretty darn good, but I don't know. Uh, for, you know, for the most mm-hmm. part, it's it's subjective, and I sort of stay away from it. Understood. Understood. Okay. All right. Okay. Yeah, Thank I you appreciate very much. everything you're doing, Art. Thank you. Okay. Thank All you, right. my friend, and, and take care. You know, I guess that said it the way I want to say it. It is sort of subjective. Um, you know, anybody can sort of say they're a psychic. And separating the wheat from the chaff is really a job when it comes to that. You're on the air with Dark Matter and Art Bell. Hi. Hello? No, I guess I didn't push the button. What a dummy. Uh, now you're on the air. I can tell because you have your radio on. Hello? Just turned it off. Sorry, Art. All Good right, evening. No, that's quite all right. Uh, everybody's going to have the radio on, I know. That's okay. I'm just calling about uh, there was a, a caves in the Midwest that you reported on years ago that they found that's like right. Egyptian artifacts. Whatever, right. whatever become of that? I don't know. People are going to ask me these questions, and I, I, I'm sorry I can't say, well, you know, they're, they're in a museum now, and you can see them. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I don't okay. know. It's not a good, satisfying answer, but it's the only one I have. Okay, Art. Thank you, sir. Uh, you're very welcome, and uh, and take care. There's going to be a lot of that. And a lot of times I'm going to say, I don't know, because I don't know. But yes, there were caves in the Midwest that people were exploring, and they were finding fascinating things in them. But beyond that, no. Dark Matter, and you're on the air. Hello. Hi, Art. Infinite Roswells and 51s to you from the Thank vaguely you. lovable at Belgab. <laughs> <laughs> vaguely lovable, yes. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Andy from uh, Melbourne, Australia. And um, oh, wait, wait, wait a minute, Andy. You're calling yes, from Australia? I certainly am. Melbourne. Wow, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. I've been a long-time fan, but I've already said that in my Roswells. Uh, um, how's, what, how's Australia? Oh, Australia is beautiful. I love it here. Um, I, I, can, I would imagine so. I've never been to Australia, it's, and I've been to most of the world, but I've never, and I really, really want to come to Australia. Well, you're always welcome, and there's always a, a spare bedroom on my place. <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> what I was calling about is, I've got two questions. One's a, one's a follow-up for the first question. I just want to know who owns the back catalogue of all your old shows, and I'm pretty sure I know the answer to that. Oh, it's Premier Radio. Yeah, yeah. And is there any chance that you would be able to um, get that get that back in any no, way? Whatsoever. No, no way. No way. No in way? fact, uh, mm-hmm. they won't even stop playing my Saturday show. If they keep playing yeah. my Saturday show, I'm gonna I'm gonna sort of keep I'm gonna send them email and email and email until they tag it with for modern, up to date material. Please tune to Sirius XM one oh nine after the Saturday show. You know. 
I would actually love it if you had a 24-7 Art Bell channel on uh, Sirius where you played your live shows, a mix of the old shows. I think it would be well, great. <laughs> one never knows. And if I'm here long enough, we'll have lots of new old shows. Uh, definitely, definitely. Well, I'm loving it. I'm loving the new show. I love your old shows. Thank you very much for coming back. Well, thank you very much for calling, and uh, we'll take care down there. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. Tasty Australian. It's really cool. We have listeners all over the world. Um, the odds of your getting through, unless we had some special number to call. You know, I'll, I'll check during a break. I wonder if we have some special number where, for example, I could have people outside the country call or time travelers. If I want time travelers, I, I would like to have a special line because there are zillions of you out there. So, hmm. Okay. Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hi. Hi, Art. Uh, Todd here, phoning from Canada. Hi, Todd. Uh, um, is, I just want to say the other night that you had on a guest that was talking about uh, little blue guys and and they were bringing people back from the spirits and stuff like that. They're saying Whit- everybody... Whitley Strieber, yes. Yeah. Well, that, that got me thinking back to when I was younger. A friend of mine, he died, and... The day that we buried him, that night, he came to me in my sleep, and he says, same thing, I'm fine, everything is good, don't worry about me. And well, all right, you've got to wonder, I, I certainly wonder, and that is, y- you know, I, 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 I kind of understand, in your sleep he came to you, but you've got to wonder, is it your mind, or did he really come to you? I mean, you're going to miss him you're going to be grieving and your mind is going to want to do something about that grief. So somebody could make a case that that's why you had the dream, or you could make the case that in fact, he did come to you in, in your dreams and, and said that. What do you think? I, I, you're, yes, you probably have both points are very good, but it's a very, as soon as I heard him talking that night, that came back to me right away and I'm going, Oh my, that sounds so familiar. Sure. I, I've got a quick question for you. Yes. Uh, do you, when you hear the phrase tasty Canadian, do you pound the table and get upset? No. Okay. No, no. I, I, what, what do you mean by that? Well, actually, it goes back a long, long way to... Uh, we were joking about a war between Canada and the U.S. We were t- joking about uh, 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 aliens, and, you know, we got to talking about who would be tasty, and I don't know. Tasty Canadians came up somehow or another, and, you know, I just I was wondering if it was horribly offensive to you, or, I mean, it's it's a sort of a lovable, kind of a lovable term. Oh, sure. You know, as Canadians, we're pretty peaceful people, so... <laughs> I do, and you are, sir. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, very, very uh, easygoing people. Uh, almost sometimes uh, too easygoing. Uh, interviewing Canadians is always interesting because they're sort of, um, I'm not sure what the right word for it is, but very matter of fact and uh, very interesting people. Tasty Canadians. Hello there, Dark Matter. You're on the air. How we doing? We are fine. Are you a doctor? No, I am not a doctor. Okay. I, I was they, they always calling, say, "How are we today?" Uh, I was actually calling about a uh, a medical thing that happened to me that was quite interesting. Okay, did I, I say uh, that too? By the way, all right, medical. What happened? Well, I was having some shoulder pain, and I went to the local hospital, and uh, they were going to give me an MRI to check it out, see if they tore anything in my shoulder, and they asked me if I work with metal or anything before you do an MRI. And I said, yeah, I'm a, I'm a pipe fitter welder. And they said, well, we'll have to do an x-ray first. So right. they x-ray up around my head, my shoulder area. And they said, oh, you right. have a piece of, metal, piece of metal in your shoulder. I didn't, really? think, I didn't think anything of it. And I said, well, maybe, you know, you know, something gets under the skin. In my profession, you bump into sharp metal. Could happen. So uh, they said, well, we can't remove it. People with this and, you know, 
this stuff, metal in the shoulder, stuff like that, we're going to send you to a bigger hospital up in Boston. So they do. And I go in there thinking they just got pull a shot of metal out. You know, I'm thinking, is it a bigger operation or something? And, you know, they just numbed up the area, and he pulls out this metal, and I take a look, and it's like a little shiny cylinder tube, like stainless steel. And I wow. asked to look at it, and before I could, you know, the doctor just walks out of the room with it, and, you know, told the nurse to patch me up, and, which was basically a Band-Aid, and it wasn't really a, much of a procedure. And then I asked him if I could see the piece of metal, and they said, oh, we already got rid of it. Ooh. And it was... Oh, oh I and want And then I that. go back... Then I go back to my local hospital, my local doctor, I go, that really wasn't much. And one of the nurses there just said, yeah, whenever anyone has one of those little pieces of metal on it, we send them into the, the bigger hospital in Boston. Why is it I'm thinking there's a hospital, you said Boston? Yeah. With a whole room full of jars that are filled up with things like what came out of you. Yeah. So, and then... Miraculously, that thing comes out of my shoulder, and it's the side that I was having pain on. And they pulled that out, MRI'd me, found nothing wrong, and within a week, the pain that I was having in my shoulder was gone. Wow, that's quite the story. Um, I can't imagine. I, I guess in working in metals, something like that could happen, but yeah, not and I, I looking, figured they I've not looking like what point. you described. I've pulled metal out of my hands, and it looks kind of nasty and dark. It gets yeah. discolored. You get a little shot or a sliver in there, and, you, you know, it's like a big splinter. I've pulled stuff like that out of my forearms and my hands. Well, if they yanked a piece of metal out of me, I'd sure as hell want to see it. Yeah, and I wanted to see it. And I saw them, you know, they they had it in gauze, and they put it in their little plastic tray they had there, and I took a look at it, and it was just a, probably about an inch long. Maybe an well, they, of it you know what? Around. You know what? They probably took it away from you before it started glowing. Yeah, who knows? But they just pulled it out, and it was nice and shiny, like a little stainless steel cylinder. And I don't work with any metal like that. And I'm like, well, there's no way something like that I could have bumped into, something, and I would have felt something like that go in my shoulder. I didn't remember it. Yeah, you know, I'm like, that's not anything I've ever worked with. <laughs> oh, and, that's uh, wild. That's a wild story, just, my friend. Just, just threw it in the dish and walked away with it. And I said, hey, can I see that piece of metal? And they were like, oh, we already got rid of it. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. No way. No way I'd so want to see it. In fact, not only would I want to see it, I'd want to keep it. I'd want it in my own little jar. Thinking the worst, I think of a room there in Boston full of little jars, full of little things like you just gave up. You're on the air, Dark Matter. Hi. All right, I have a question for you. Good. How did you get so into radio? Did you build kits? Did you take apart old radios? Did you read schematics? How did you get so hands-on with radio? All of the above. Um, from the time I could um, go around the neighborhood and collect... Ra I did this, actually. I'm not proud of it, but... <laughs> I, I went around the neighborhood collecting old radios for um, a charity that really did not exist. Um, I was very young, you know, and statutes long past, and I would take them apart and build stuff. And so, yeah, that's how it happened. And all my life, I've never done anything but radio. <laughs> that's fantastic. Um, okay, well, thanks. Um uh... <laughs> For that, and I just wanted to say I'm a long time listener. I heard about your return from Bell Gab. However, oh, yes. I think it was very gracious of George to announce your return during his own broadcast. Yes, that was so gracious. Uh, and I guess uh, thanks for the ride, and I'm listening again. <laughs> All right, take care, my friend. Thank you. It is amazing, isn't it, how one uh, site gets around uh, to the degree that site does, Bell Gap. I mean, they come and go. Sites rise, you know, these chat sites. Sites that uh, talk about things like this program and, uh, and programs like it or that discuss similar things would be a better way to phrase it. It's an amazing age we live in today. On Twitter, I'm ArtBell51. 
on Facebook. Well, I'm just me. But you have to be on these things today. Although I, I, I admit to enjoying it. You know, I've got an iPhone 5 strapped right here to my hip. And it's a, a world that's kind of a lot of fun. You know, for a techie, it's a lot of fun. So, uh, I made a request during the break for a special line. And we do have a couple, frankly, but we can't give them out because they'd be abused. And we need them for, well, you know, guests, things like that. So those numbers we can't give out, but we can probably request and get another line. And I hereby make that request. So far, Sirius XM has virtually done everything I've asked for. Now I'm asking for a special line so that in the future, if we want time travelers only, if we want overseas callers only, uh, we'll get it. And we can do that by having a special line for nothing else but that. So uh, tonight's show proves that, uh, uh, that, that we need that. And I think that should be enough. What do you think? Here we go. Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hi. Hey, Art. Hello. Yes, hey. Ros- hey, Roswell's, man. Thank you. Um, yes, I'm, uh, actually, I just went through Roswell about an hour and a half ago. I'm a truck driver. All I right. Just make, yeah, I, I, I just want to make a point that uh, the, uh, all those dead cattle up in South Dakota, they had a yes, sir. freak snowstorm up there. I know There's they like, had bad weather. Yeah, I know, but you 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 would think though you would wouldn't you think that um, you know I mean cattle are used to weathering storms, right? Well, you get that cold and that that much snow, they can't move around. They can't move around. They can't get any blood flow, and they can't get the blood flow in the case they warm. They all huddle together, but they, they they do freeze. I mean that that happened in the out in the west a lot back back in the olden days. Uh, the reason I called tonight, I'm one of them lucky people. I have seen a Bigfoot, a Sasquatch. Where? I was, Mexico, I was in New Mexico, going between Santa Rosa and Las Vegas. I was headed up to the hill, and I come up over this hill. I'm a truck driver, and I come up over this hill, and I've got real good bright lights on my truck. But I saw that there's a white house on one side and a white barn on the other side, and both of them have these uh, outdoor lights. And I saw a shadow coming across the house there. And I thought, man, that's headed right for the road, you know? So <laughs> the hair on the back of my head is standing up right now. It still freaks me out. But I saw this shadow coming across the, this house, and it got my attention because it was headed for the road. And sure enough, that dude walked right across the road right in front of me. Um, he's probably 100 yards in front of me when he walked All right, across. D- describe the dude. Well, he, he, he's a big, tall guy. I don't know how tall. He's about eight foot, I guess. And there wasn't really a whole lot I could see. It was about three o'clock in the morning. And there, was the, the dude the covered light, with with hair? Yeah, it was. It was real dark hair. Uh, you couldn't really see a lot. The, the light didn't penetrate enough to see anything. I mean, you, you could see the guy walking across the road. Lot of him because the light just didn't, didn't reflect off of it, you know. I okay, we're beginning anything. to lose. I'm I'm sorry, we're beginning to lose you. Uh, so you 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 got to look n- enough to know about eight feet tall and hairy. I guess he's gone. Oh, it's too bad. <sighs> Cellular phones. There is uh, a movement on. I I would like to say this about cellular phones. To increase bandwidth, and let me explain to you what that means. The first cell phone company that increases bandwidth and gets back to the kind of commercials where you can hear a pin drop and it really sounds good again is going to get my money. And I really mean that. The first cell phone company to come out with increased bandwidth, in other words, a good-sounding phone, kind of like the old days, is going to get my money. And it's coming. I am told that there are major, some of the biggest cell phone companies that are now beginning to work on that very concept. Wouldn't you love to see those pin drop commercials again? Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hi. Hi. This is John. Uh, 
but they call me Earthquake. Okay, Earthquake. I like that name. Well, I got it because um, my I'm a pilot, and when I was going through flight school, my instructor always told everyone that uh, he could always tell when I was doing my takeoffs and landings because his coffee mug would shake. <laughs> but, I don't know if that's good, but but okay. Well, but anyway, I'm calling because this guy Dallas. Uh, I remember that show very well, and my horse poop meter like broke that night. It was uh-huh. oh, it was like extremely unbelievable. You you don't remember he you know you were like really like I'm I, I can't believe this guy is actually this stuff is coming out of his pie hole. You know, well, maybe maybe it was not that memorable for me. Well, it was probably the the you had the most, I guess, patience that I've ever heard you you have with anybody. This guy was he was talking about you know using this this uh, fan you know jet pack to go you know down into this you know the the this hollow earth thing, and he's like he was I, legally I blind. It, I believe. Listen, wasn't it at the North Pole? Yeah, and he was legally yeah. blind, and he said, "Oh, but 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 I'll be able to see just fine when I get down in the in the center of the earth." And I'm like, "Oh, geez, Louise!" <laughs> but well, uh, you don't remember that at all. I do. I, that, I remembered it. It was at the North Pole. I I didn't remember the helicopter part. Well, it was like, well, they just actually flew the prototype uh, about six months ago. It's actually a fan ducted fan jetpack. They call it a jetpack because it's jet jets of air. And they just flew it with a dummy, by the way, mm-hmm. um, a real dummy, not a, like a... Well, all right, I, I raise, sir, the same objection, and that is, fine, if there's a hole at the North Pole down into the center of the Earth, great. But uh, whether it's a jetpack or a helicopter, you're going to run out of air or fuel before you get anywhere near the center of the Earth. And the guy was and, blind. Well, that, that does add a de- degree I mean, you know, did he go to the uh, Helen Keller School of Flying or something? <laughs> I don't know. By the way, Art, I don't know. I mean, we're a program that considers and listens to anything. Yeah, but boy, that guy's nose must have been growing. So it, I, I tell you, it was just like unbelievable. I was just rolling my back of my eyes. I actually rolled in the back of my head that night. But Art, one thing I want to ask you about. Um, yes. I'm a pilot, and I'm building an airplane. And Ooh. what I... What I plan to do is I plan to break the absolute world record for doing outside loops. Now, really? my, my only problem is I had been sick for the last seven years. I've had, like, MRSA seven times. I've had, like, six or seven back operations. Right. Uh, I became diabetic. I had to sell my, the airplane I had then, you know, but I became non-diabetic. You know, I lost weight, and I took, got off some medications I was taking. And my problem is I need, like, Oh, I don't know, it's 25 grand or so to get this sucker finished. Uh huh. And I, it's like, I have no idea how I'm going to come up with this money, especially now with, you know, the government going broke. Geez, you know, I was even hoping to maybe, you know, talk to somebody about getting a grant or something. Uh, but you, do you have any idea how one could get an airplane finished in this world right now? Hmm. I mean, I have the engine. I actually helped design it. You know, the plane is going to be stressed for 9 Gs positive, 6 Gs negative. And, you know, I think I could do it. You know, the, the woman who has the record, she did a 206 outside loose, but she had a husband who was a multi-millionaire. Listen, listen to me. If, if, if a guy with horns kind of glowing red came to you and said, look, son, I know you need 25 big ones uh, to build this plane. All I need is your signature down here at the bottom. It's this little soul thing. And uh, you sign this and you get your money. I'm crazy, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but, so uh, no deal, huh? But, uh, I, no, 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 no I, I, will, I, will, I will do a lot of things, but I won't sell mine or anyone else's soul. In fact, I'm the guy that, that if the guy... See, now that's, that's, what I call, I, that's what I call serious faith, my friend. Serious well, faith. Well, they, well, you know, I mean, you know, you, I, I think... Sometimes things, good things happen, but like I'm the kind of person that there was a movie out where, you know, people, some guy will come to a couple with this box with a button on it, and if you push the button, you became a millionaire, but yeah. then someone else in the world died. Died. That's right. I would not, um, uh, I would do that. not on a hot bet. 
Nope. Okay. Not, absolutely right. not. But then again, you know, nice guys don't get the airplanes finished. <laughs> no, that's right. Look, a lot of people would say, you know, I, I, I really don't believe in all of that anyway. Sure, I'll sign. Here you go. How many of you would do that? For $25,000. It's a guy with horns, and he's glowing a little reddish color. And yeah, his eyes are kind of glowing red. But he's got 25 grand in cold, hard cash. All you've got to do is put your signature on that line. You don't believe in all that stuff, right? Sign here. Dark Matter, you're on the air. Art Bell. This is yes. Bill. One of your... Hey. Friendly truck drivers calling you in. Welcome back, buddy. Haven't heard you for a long time. <laughs> Thank you. Isn't it if Boy, you call as a truck driver that you can drive from one end of the country to the other and never lose the signal, huh? I love that satellite thing. That is the best thing since sliced bread, I got to say. I, it is. I just heard about you back last night. I had a buddy call me. He says, have you ever heard of this guy? And I go, oh, my God. No way! Because yeah, <laughs> you told me I, I listened to you last night. That, that God, welcome back, man. This is awesome to have you back. Well, thank you. Uh, we're and, we're trying uh, to abbreviate that when 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 people call, they say Roswell's. What that means is love you, nice that you're back, and all that kind of stuff. Well, many Roswells. Hey, thank on you. that cow thing going on up there in South Dakota, that was because of that big storm. Uh, right. We had a bunch of our drivers getting through there. And, any uh, any idea how many cows uh, were lost? It, it's in the thousands, and the problem of it is, is why that guy stacking them up against the fence is in protest to the federal government being closed down right now. He can't yep. get any aid to help clean it up. Oh, brother. Yeah, so oh. it's going to be a rotten pile here pretty soon. Uh, a very stinky pile, yeah. Yeah, at that, but... Yeah, still out here, still driving. Glad to hear you back. I've seen another Bigfoot since uh, I've talked to you last. I just heard that other guy talking about it, and uh, they're out here. That's my fourth one I've seen. Listen, I've up. heard. I, I've heard. Maybe you can tell me. I've heard there's going to be a truckers protest back in D.C. Uh, where they're going to just sort of line up and do 55 miles an hour. Have you heard about that? Yeah, they did that back in, I believe, Reagan days, too. But I, I think it was some guy just kind of barking up a tree and hoping to have some followers. There might be uh -huh. a few hundred, but I, I doubt it's going to be a big jam like they participate. I mean, the, the price of fuel, the price of a truck, uh, I can't afford to take a day off, you know, as it is. So it's, why would you want I, to do I that? Know that? I know that you guys were getting the hell squeezed out of you, um, and it was just getting rougher and rougher and rougher. So you're saying you got to you have to be in that truck working it virtually every day? Right. With the new hours of regulations they just passed this last year, it's outrageous. I mean, they're forcing now, I'm, you know, we're only allowed to work 14 hours in a day. We're only allowed to drive 11. And anywhere any, in a consistent eight-hour period, I have to take a 30-minute break. I'm forced to do that. And wow. I, a 34-hour out would give me a 70-hour clock again because we work as a 70 and 8-hour clock with the company I work for. And I'm only allowed to do one of those every 168 hours, which is every uh, I, I've got a question. I've got a question. Um, yes. In the old days, uh, people used to bend the regulations. Truckers, you know, would uh, make up one log and make up another log and stuff like that. Is that still going on? It is, but in today's technology, those were called comic books, you know. Uh, yeah. We're running on electronic log books, and they're really neat because most of the law enforcement, when they ask you for your log book, you tell them what's in there on the dashboard of my truck. We're running an electronic onboard computer, and... Uh, they don't want to have nothing to do with it. They just look at it. Oh, uh, that's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Thank yeah. you very much. Uh, yeah, of course. Um, you know, this is a cool deal for truckers. Because, you know, you're sailing through the night. You're working a lot of hours. And you can only listen to music so long before. And it's good for a while, actually. Uh, but then after a while, to stay awake, you really need something like this talk radio, and it will keep you awake.
You're on the air on Dark Matter. Hi. Roswell. Hello. Yes, thank you. Uh, turn, 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 please. It's, it's off. Okay, I have two words. John Titer. Um, sorry. John Titer. Yes. Um, do you think he was real or maybe a, a Phil Hendrickson? Oh, he... oh, you're talking about Teeter, the time traveler. Yeah, it's him. Titer. I, I didn't get that for a second. Teeter. Sorry. Um, that's all right. Um, I don't know. I think he is probably the strongest case that we've had yet, you know, in, in terms of one who's been talking to us about this. I, I think he's the strongest. Um, now, his thing was um, uh, different timelines every time he traveled back and right. forth. So That's right. maybe his things didn't come through or maybe didn't come true. But he, he kind of reminds me of Phil Hendry from 2036. <laughs> <laughs> really? Okay. But... No, I just thought you, your your thoughts on on John Titter. Well, I, I'd I'd love to interview him. Those are my thoughts. You know, if he's out there and if he crosses this timeline, tell him Mark Bell's on Sirius XM and wants to speak to him. Gosh, I would. I wish I had a. You know, I mean, the people who are on the lines right now really want to get through, right? So I can't really. It wouldn't be fair to have them hang up and then say time travelers only that just wouldn't be fair what we need is that special line and we will work on it how about that you're on the air this is dark matter art Hi. art bell it's wonderful to speak with you thank you many many, many roswells many rendlesham forest even <laughs> Yeah, do you remember the magazine back in the 1980s called Omni Magazine? Of course, yes. Yes? Uh, I just want to tell you a little story about uh, what uh, an article they had about how to control your dreams. Okay. And by the way, this is Wayne from Denver. Yes, Wayne. Nice, nice talking with you. But this article focused on how to control your dreams, and it gave you a little step-by-step -step thing that you were supposed to do during the day to prove to yourself that you're awake and then concentrate really hard when you go to sleep and it worked but not in the way I thought it was going to I think I actually had an out of body experience and I left it out of my body and I floated out of my bedroom down the hallway and floated past my father my feet were dragging on the ceiling the whole time and I could remember feeling the bumps of the the doorways that I was going through. <clears throat> That's something. And I floated past my father, who at that time was sitting in his chair, reading the newspaper. I floated past him, saw him, floated through the kitchen, the back rec room, and out the door, the back door. And as soon as I started to head towards the sky, I just got sucked right back into my body real quick. And I just opened my eyes. I was just like, wow, what was that? <laughs> And I actually went out and looked, and my father was still sitting in that same position, you know, reading his newspaper. Now, that and would freak me out. In other words, you had confirmation that everything was as you saw it in the so-called dream. Yes, yes. It just completely freaked me out. And I immediately walked out there, and I told my father, and he didn't really, you know, say he felt anything. But, yeah, it, it yeah, was I'm, I'm sure you got a sure, son. <laughs> I, I got a what? Sure, son. I understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He thought I was a little wacky. <laughs> uh huh. Yeah, I'm sure. But the, uh, uh, the following month, I think it was one month later, they had one an, another special feature in the Omni magazine of how to have an out of body experience, <clears throat> which I thought was kind of weird. You know, I tried to control my dream and I had an out of body. And when I tried the no, out of body, no, really, you can do it. You can do it as you just found, as you not just found out, but as you found out, it is possible to leave your body. Uh, yeah, I believe it now, and it took probably maybe four or five different days of doing this religiously during the day. Read something, go back and read it again. If it reads the same thing, you prove to yourself that you're awake. Let me ask you a question. Did it scare you? It scared me when I went out the back door and headed towards the sky. Then I felt no control. I felt like I was just going to go wherever, and I had no control of it. And Normally, think, that's what will snap you right back. 
That's uh, what did it, yes. As soon as I yeah, saw the sky. Go. That's right. It was yeah, freaky. Any, any sort of fright will bring you right back. It's not as though uh, you can stop it. And it's not as though you can prevent the fear. Only with extended practice, exactly what it was saying, doing it again and again and again and again, you can begin to get good. And you can leave your body. It's a, it's a real phenomenon. I, I have a complaint about dreams, and I wonder if any of you share it with me. And it is this. Um, most dreams are okay. You know, I don't have a problem with them. The dreams that I do have a problem with are the ones where you have to work at something, you know, where you're striving and really trying to get something done, accomplished, whatever it is. And you wake up and you feel as though you have just worked a 16 hour day. I mean, it was serious, whatever it was, it was serious work. And so you wake up without the feeling of, uh, of being rested. You wake up tired, annoyed at having such a dream. That's, that's the word I would use, annoyed. You're on dark matter. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, uh, Roswell TR. Yeah, I was just, uh, just asking about a former guest you used to have and if you're going to still have him, uh, Ed Dames. Sure, I'd have Ed Dames back on. Yeah, he's pretty good. And sure he is. And, and you know what? You have to imagine that what he talks about, uh, this kill shot that he talks about, everybody's, ah, he's such baloney because it's never happened. Well, you know what? Um, some things just don't come true, for example, in this lifetime. In other words, what he's seeing may yet come true. It's a central tenant uh, when he remote views. He sees it again and again and again and again. We may not be here to see... To say, oh, check it out. Ed's right. We're dead. Yeah, yeah. Once, once would be enough. Yeah, I just <laughs> want to say, uh, welcome back to the air, and now it's sleepless nights again. Uh, thank you so very much. All yeah, right, all right. Care. Good talking to you. Mm -hmm, take care. Sleepless nights. This is the time for things of this nature. Things that uh, may have a bit of a bump in the night. And, of course, this is the month for things that really go bump in the night. You are on the air. Hello. How dare you? Oh, uh, here we go. Here we go. I'm just kidding, Art. How do you like oh, my really? TV impression? <laughs> uh, how do I like it? It was so good that you, you heard me begin to respond. <laughs> Hi, this is uh, Lou. I'm from Buffalo. Uh, Driving across Ohio, I'm a truck driver, and uh, I thought I very, like to... very funny, Lou. <laughs> well, I thought I'd like to share something with the audience. I don't know if it's been in the news or anything, but uh, I have a lot of family members, like three of them, that work for the IRS, and they oh. were off all of last week. And I'm pretty sure they're still off this week, but I was having dinner with them over the uh, weekend, and uh, they got a call from their office, and apparently they're getting back pay for all the time that they're off. Um, but the government hasn't started back up again yet. Well, I don't know about that, but I know whoever their boss is or whatever at the IRS called them and said, you know, don't worry, you're... You're getting paid for all the time you're sitting here doing nothing. So I thought that might be kind of interesting. Well, it is interesting, uh, and I'm going to have to verify that with somebody else, because what I heard was that while most of the government was shut down, the IRS would keep going as usual. So let's have a little more from people out there. How about the rest of you? Anybody know anybody working in the IRS? The firm word I had was that the IRS would continue as usual. Hmm. Back to the lines we go. Uh, you are on the air. This is Dark Matter. Hello. Hi, this is Gary from uh, Chattanooga, Tennessee. Hey there. Hi, um, I was wanting to uh, ask you, um, I know you're a, a real big ham operator. Um, I'm a truck driver, and I notice, like, when I'm driving down the road, if I got my CB radio on, 
that uh, yes. I can hear people in, I'll be in um, Ohio, I can hear people talking from California. And right. I, it, was, it was told to me that some, like a phenomenon called skip, and I was wondering if you could tell me exactly how that works. I guess I could. Uh, sure. Um, I'll turn your radio back on and listen. We are in, uh, we're, we're in a period of time right now when we should have really good skip. When you can shoot all the skip you want. Of course, it's not legal, but uh, what this refers to is the, our ionosphere. Radio, when the conditions are right, it depends on the 11-year sun cycle. We should be having fantastic radio right now. Uh, but it's not as good as it could be and as we wish it would be. But 27 megahertz, which is where CB uh, communications occur, when the sun is right, uh, when it's angry enough and producing sunspots and we get flares and all the rest of it, well, that band begins to bounce instead of just going across terrain for, what, 20 miles at best? It suddenly begins to bounce off the ionosphere and back to Earth. So, if you were to draw a circle Earth and an ionosphere up above, and you were then to imagine your signal goes to the ionosphere and then bounces back to Earth, that's how it happens. And suddenly, you're hearing people from the other side of the country or the other side of the world. And again, it's tied into our 11-year um, or 22-year, depending on how you want to look at it, at it uh, sun cycle. Uh, we've been all hoping the sun cycle would be a little better, a little angrier, a little better for what we call propagation. But so far, it's been kind of a dud. Now, there is a school of thought that says, look out. Because while it's been a dud so far, we are in the peak at the moment. And so the sun could suddenly let go, well, I don't want to say an Ed Dame-style blast, but it could happen. This is Dark Matter, and you're on the air. Hi. Yes, hey, Art. This is Jason in South Carolina. Hi, Jason. Hey, I just wanted to share a personal story of my cat that passed about six years ago, and it, it relates to the whole question of this, is there souls and animals and pets sure. like that sure so it's just a tidbit but it's it's entirely true and just for for people to digest and think think about um but this cat was 20 years old she was pure white and i was with her when she was born and of course there when she died and she was deaf completely deaf couldn't hear anything and if you it's just like with people when a cat's deaf they have the most unique meow that you can imagine. Well, she did this her whole life, and I would know it if I heard it today. It's something that you couldn't mistake for another cat or for really any other sound. But long story short, we were uh, she was put to sleep just due to old age and things like that. And I came back to my home. She lived with my parents. I was 29 at the time, and. Uh, we were, of course, sad. She was, you know, very important to the family. But I was just sitting there on the couch with my mother. We were quiet after, you know, just this, just uh, two hours after she had been put to sleep. Right. And we were just just sitting there. And it's a small home, but we could look straight through the uh, door into the kitchen. And we heard this sound. It was just like her meow. I mean, it's unmistakable. Oh. It couldn't have been a cat outside or... Any kind of machinery, I've never heard it. Anything like it since then or before then, just some as a random noise. And I heard it, and I just kind of stopped and thought to myself, and I just kind of turned and looked at her. And I said, you know, that, that sounds like vanilla. And she nodded, and she said, yeah, I heard that too. And yeah. the, the state that we were in, we just just kind of acknowledged it and then just went on and I'm sure it was it was in my mind and I know it was in it was in her mind so for me that... I'm with you all the way I'm I'm with you all the way my friend listen uh my yeti is 22 now and I don't see how anybody can deny it well if you're not maybe if you're not an animal person and I know the uh the, the bible doesn't speak of this 
But if here's my opinion. If we have souls, and I lean toward yes, we do, and you're an animal person, and you look into the eyes of your cat or your dog, and you don't know there's a soul in there, then there's something wrong with you. They have, uh, if you really examine, if you live with animals, then you know. They virtually have all the aspects that we have. They have love. Oh, they have lots of love. They have anger. They have hatred. They have jealousy. They have on and on and on and on. The sense of possession. Everything you can imagine. No, they can't talk. But if you look into their eyes and you don't know that they have souls, then I don't know about you. That's my belief, for whatever it's worth. Somebody wrote, uh, hey, Art, how could you not have remembered your OBE? Well, sure, I had an OBE. It was a very quick one, and it occurred in Paris, France. And uh, my wife at the time and I had gone to Paris on vacation. And maybe that had something to do with it, but I was... Out of my body, boom, like that. I was in a place suddenly that was the most, well, there are not words to describe how joyful and amazing a place it was. And I guess I was so completely in shock that I popped right back into my body. And uh, I immediately woke my wife up and said, oh my God, I was just out of my body. And I really was, but it was, it was very quick. And I was so shocked then I'm sure that's what popped me right back in again. Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hi. Hello, this is Lloyd in Fountain Hills, Arizona. Hello, Lloyd. Uh, I'm going to give you a news story that is three years old, two years and 11 months. Okay. So it's not exactly breaking news. Well, yeah, but it's something you have never heard before. I mean, I've never heard it before on any program. Okay. Okay, so you're ready. Yes. Okay, remember when the uh, Chinese submarine supposedly shot off a missile in Los Angeles? That no. was That was, well, I'll give, I'll give you the date. It was uh, November 10th, 2010. Oh, I d- now I do remember something about that. Yes, okay, go ahead. Okay, so the, they said the missile misfired. All right, so I live in Fountain Hills, which I was looking straight north from my house. Los Angeles is on my left, and New Mexico and Texas is on my right. So anyway, I did not see the missile misfire. I heard about that on the radio later on. But when I looked off to the left, this is pre-dawn in Los Angeles and just about dawn in Fountain Hills where I'm at. Right. Okay, so anyway... Off to my left is a bunch of balls. I know this sounds stupid, but a yellow and green balls. It looked like energy to me. Bright and shiny and all that stuff anyway. And then I looked off to the right, and coming up from behind the trees, of course, this is way beyond the trees, but coming up from behind the trees comes this, I don't know what you'd call it, a craft of some kind. Oh. And it's coming up very fast and it's almost transparent and it's coming up to the curvature of the earth and then it starts following the curvature of the earth now this thing is huge and i can't tell you how huge except when airplanes go over here these they're going over to thirty two thousand feet they look like little nothing like little dots right. i'm sure hundreds of them could fit on this thing without a doubt so anyway i could watch this thing from those trees it went following the curvature of the earth, and it went beyond uh, New Mexico because I could see New Mexico because I've seen missile misfirings from uh, white sand, so I can see that far. At any rate, this thing went over, and I would imagine I saw it for possibly absolute tops five minutes as it went along the curvature of the earth. And at five minutes, it went, I'm going to say for numbers, uh, a thousand miles that I could see it. So anyway, let's go on twelve thousand miles an hour, something like that. Now, now that's that's the boring part of the thing. The, the boring. thing is, the thing is, where was it built? 
Why was it built? Did it come out of the ocean when they were giving us all this distractions with the missile misfiring and these green and yellow uh, balls and all that? And where is it going? And where is it going to land if it does land somewhere? And th- that's the end of my story. And I'm, I'm uh, well, I was at 81 years old at that time. I have, I'm not selling a book. All I gain out of this is ridicule from my friends when I told them, hey, uh-huh, okay. So that's probably what I'll get from you, too. No, I won't ridicule you. Okay. But it's no news. You're not interested in it. Well, of course I'm interested in it. I, I would have a few questions. Okay, I'm listening. Something as big as you said it was, uh, traveling as fast as you said it was, should have been reported by a lot of people. Would you agree? Exactly. That's why I never called it in that night. I thought, oh, God, everybody's got to see this. I've called Art Nouri hundreds of times, and I can't get through to him. It's always busy. Art Nouri? Huh? Huh? Art Nouri? No, George Nouri. I called Nouri. George Nouri. I see. I called him hundreds of times, and it was always a line busy, and then I finally gave up. Uh I see. Okay, any other good questions? Who, who could have built this thing? And where where would it have been built? And is that the only one that has been built? Well, I, anyway. I, yeah, I, I, of course, have no idea, no answer for all of that. Um, no answer at all. I, the only thing I can think of is that a lot of people should have seen it. I mean, the size that you declared it to be as compared to uh, aircraft. You're on the air. Uh, this is Dark Matter. Hello. How are you doing? I'm okay, sir. Hey, this is Brent. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Ison meeting Planet X by the sun. Ison meeting Planet X? By the sun. By the sun. Yeah, I got heard about 30 pictures of Planet X. And uh, Hoagland, remember he was saying about the Ison, that when you looked at one of the pictures, it looked like a honeycomb, and he thinks that there was, you know, people coming out. Mm, and no, and we're, we're confusing. And we're confusing some things. He had a picture of a comet. Um, right, not, the comet Ison, right? N- no, no, comet. no, sir. That was not a picture of Ison. Oh, I it thought was a pi- what that was a picture about. that NASA that they took of a comet, but it was not Ison. Well, anyway, I got about thirty pictures. I've been taking these pictures for the last six months of the sun, you know, you put your sunglasses up to the the lens of the camera and you take the pictures and you you get to see uh, Planet X right there by uh, the sun, which is around 7 o'clock, you know, and, and then... I've, uh, been, I've uh, been really curious about this whole Planet X thing. I mean, yeah. if, if Planet X was the kind of thing that you could, well, you meant, mentioned hold your sunglasses up to the uh, camera and then take a picture and see it, a whole planet? You know, uh, the, well, you don't we, see the whole planet. You just see, you know, it's like a, like a light. You know, I mean, it's, uh, it's really small. But but when you take it, when you take the picture, you can see that. Now, then, uh, then a few months later, which about two or three months uh, ago, I forget what the guy's name, but he said if you take the picture and get uh, there's a dormant sun with it. And so I was look, I was thumbing through my pictures that I got, and uh, I can understand where he was talking about the dormant sun because I have about six of them. And, uh, you know, and uh, it, it's up there. To, uh, all you got to do, and if you want to Google it, go Google and, and punch oh, in Planet I, I, X. I they'll know. tell you all about that, you know. Oh, but, I, I, I know, and I don't. I'm not buying it. Uh, I'm sorry. I've been hearing about Planet X since I could read, uh, and that would be a while. People believing that there is a Planet X and people like this last gentleman who think that Planet X is just basically sitting there in full view. I'm sorry, sir, I, I just don't buy it. I just don't buy it. Now, could there be a Planet X that would be a rogue planet and would enter our system and cause havoc? Yes, that's certainly a possibility. Astronomically, it's a possibility. But is there a Planet X just hanging out there? In our system right now? No. No, I don't think so. Um, I just don't think so. You're on Dark Matter. Hello. Hi, Art Bell. How are you? Uh, just fine, sir. It's an honor to talk to you and Mega Roswell's to you. This is John in 8MXA in Athens, Ohio. 
All right. Just wanted to uh, wish you the best of luck on your new show. Well, thank you. And uh, you've done a great job so far. It's awesome. Well, thank you. All right, sir. You guys have a great night. Tell that guy uh, <laughs> on the CB band, he uh, needs to get into the ham radio and uh, get on the 10 Well, I, you know, a lot of hams are somewhat... Uh, I tend to get somewhat upset with CB ears. Uh, I'm not one of them. I really don't care how you get into radio. If it, if your path is through the CB band, that's fine. And um, as a matter of fact, CB is actually fine. So I'm not one of those hands. I don't uh, uh, get my nose out of place uh, with CB ears at all. In fact, when I'm on the road, I will use CB because... CB will tell you what's going on, where the trouble is, where the traffic jam is, roads to take to get around it. It has a very serious use. Anyway, it's a great way for people to get into radio and then uh, eventually into real radio, which is ham radio. So I'm, I'm kind of a fan of it, frankly. Whatever stepping stone, you're on the air. This is Dark Matter. Hi. Art, how you doing? Very well, sir. I go by the nickname Florida Jim. And I'm Florida calling. Jim, okay. Yeah, I'm calling about John Teeter. Okay. I had the privilege to interact with him back on your old post to post AM forum back in 2001. You mean coast to coast? Well, yeah, you guys had a forum up with the post to post name. Oh, I see. <laughs> yeah, Keith Ryan. And uh, he struck me as an anti government kind of guy, but. He made an interesting offer. He said, listen, I'm going back to 1998. If you want to email yourself, you know, three years in the past, send it to me. I was like, yeah, it's an interesting idea. So I did that. Ever since then, I keep experiencing timeline changes that nobody around me has any awareness of. All right, now we're, we're off to the races here. When you say timeline changes, explain it to me. Okay. Uh, I'm driving down the road, and on what I knew was an empty lot the day before is a brand-new, functioning, fully stocked Walgreens grocery store or pharmacy. Wow. Then I'm driving down another road. I had this extreme deja vu feeling. Could, couldn't understand what it was. It wasn't like I had been there. It was more like something's out of place. Uh, A few hours later, I drive back up the same road. Another empty lot had turned into a furniture store. And all these odd little things kept happening. At first, I didn't want to say anything about it. But I was a little scared I was going to wake up and my wife and son were not going to be around. Nobody was going to remember them and all this kind of stuff. I hear you. So I got in touch with some of the other people who had been on the forum talking, talking this year. And they were having similar experiences. Uh, I even had a common one in, in, uh, with a woman named Pamela who kind of collected the emails for John. <laughs> and uh, it's just bizarre. Now, for me, it's continued. I, I had this happen again in September. And just minor, you know, feeling of like alter deja vu. I actually call it an alter vu because it's not, you know, things changed. And, has uh, it ever has it ever extended? You know, you mentioned uh, buildings and structures and so forth, and that's freaky enough. Has it ever extended to people? Absolutely, and that is one of the freakiest things that's happened. I've had situations where people, famous people, obviously uh, Arthur C. Clarke, Nelson Mandela, Stephen Hawking, these people had died in my past. Then I discovered that they were alive again. And, uh, but the most interesting for me, I'm, I'm very much in the music. I'm a musician and all. Uh, a man named Chris Cornell, lead singer of a couple of bands, Soundgarden, Audio Slave. In my original timeline, he died in 1999 of a drug overdose. Then I had a alter vu. A, a timeline change, a time quake, whatever you want to call it, in 2007. And as soon as that happened, he was back alive. And there were eight years of music 
I had never heard from this man. That's that incredible. I, I was just stunned. And so today I still ask, you know, I, I unfortunately don't think Peter's ever going to get back here because he went off mission. <laughs> I don't <laughs> think they're going to let him fly that thing anymore. Uh, he, he wasn't supposed to travel to 1998, 2000, 2001 and all that. But, um, yeah, strange phenomenon. You know, if anybody's got any answers, I'd be happy to give out an email telling me why the hell this is still happening. <laughs> I understand. It's extremely worrisome. Uh, thank you very much. He mentioned the name, uh, of course, of Nelson Mandela. And I think that the, uh, the whole world had one about Nelson Mandela. I brought this up on uh, the previous program. I was convinced that the press had reported Nelson Mandela as dead. And this was years and years ago. I recall being on the air one night and saying, uh, or referencing the fact that Nelson Mandela had died. And I firmly believed that. And I firmly believed that I had heard that um, on the national news. And that was an accepted fact in my mind. And lo and behold, Nelson Mandela was very, very much alive. So, latest show as it comes out, please subscribe at www.youtube.com forward slash user forward slash disclosure radio. We'll do that in the next break. That way, everybody will have an opportunity to get through between now and then. And you'll know that as of the next break, you should all hang up and we'll just hang in there for time travelers and uh, and the rest of that jolly little group and see what we can get. Uh, in view of the fact that we don't have a special line, that's about all I can do. Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, Arvell. Uh, I got a question for you. Remember earlier this year when... Um a lot of strange phenomena, uh, strange noises from the sky were reported, and it was all over the Internet. And I had seen it, and I had heard it. Oh, you're kind of breaking up on me a little bit. Uh, earlier in the year, a strange phenomena all over the Internet, something. Strange noises from the sky, Art. Do you oh, yes. you walk down? Yeah, I do, yes. And what is your opinion on that? Uh, I, I have none particularly um, about the source of them. Um... We, uh, we hear strange noises here all the time, big booms, and we sort of know what they are. They're dropping bombs uh, over at Fort Irwin. Uh, and, and when I say big booms, I mean gigantic booms. So we're kind of used to hearing strange noises, but we, I, I know what you're referring to on the Internet, and no, I, I have no idea. I guess he's gone. That's sad. Well, that's the cellular world that we live in now. Now you know why we um, uh, require that our guests have a corded phone. Sorry about that, sir. Uh, the gods were not smiling on you. Dark Matter, and you're on the air. Hello. Hello, this is Joey from Alabama. Hi, Joey. Hey, is this Harvell? I'm the only one here. <laughs> okay, hey, um, I was... <laughs> Um, I wanted to uh, thank you. I'm a, a new listener, and um, it's awesome getting to hear you every night. So um, I wanted to ask a question, and I also wanted to make a comment. I remember somebody calling a little earlier about dreams and um, being able to control their dreams. And uh, I, I don't really believe that you can control your dreams. I, I, I think there's something greater uh, than, than myself when it comes to dreams. And I, I wanted to say that it's kind of a, um, hard for me to say this on the air, but I'm a recovering alcoholic. And uh, mm-hmm. for the past 15 years, um, whenever I would dream about drinking, whenever alcohol would be in my dream, I would either be right. chasing the drink, I would be uh, drinking the drink, or I'd be uh, running from something bad that happened from that, from drinking. And that would right. be a, a constant thing that would happen to me. And, 
anyways, uh, it, during it, I'm, I'm kind, of, kind of a new person in recovery, and uh, something amazing happened to me last week. Uh, I had a dream, and, you know, my friends were all drinking and having a good time, and, and it was for the first time in, in my life, uh, really, in, my, in my dream, it did not phase me. I didn't want it. I, oh. It was it was uh, nonchalant to me in my dream, and I woke up, you know, just amazed uh, that that that's not that that hadn't occurred. And I guess what I, I just want, I guess it's like a testimony. I guess that you know, I think only good and evil control your dreams, and I, I believe something good um, is working in my life. Well, maybe, uh, maybe, sir, your dream was an actual breakpoint for you. In other words, uh, if you had that dream and alcohol was involved and you were not drawn to it as you always have been in the past, that could be a true turning point, I would think, in your life. And it could be, I don't want to diminish, you know, the, the dream in any way, but it could be a wonderful sign for you that you have mentally turn the corner. I don't know. That's just a, you know, a wag, um, which uh, some people refer to as a wild-ass guess. <laughs> Hello there on Dark Matter. You have achieved the air. Hey, how you doing, Art? Very well, sir. Thank you. Uh, I'm a driver driving through Nebraska, and I want to say uh, welcome to Sirius Radio. It's about time. It's been a long time. Great to be here. I got a story um, back in 2001. Uh, I used to deliver to uh, stores at night, and we had to key to all the stores. And uh, I had pulled around to a loading dock in the back of the store. And I got out of the truck, and I walked around to the front of the store. And the front of the store was open. The door was wide open. I guess the manager had gone home for the night and forgot to lock the door. And uh, we were instructed, you know, to call the police because it happened now and again. And I went into the front of the store, and I went to the uh, the uh, front desk, and I went to pick up the phone. Picked up the phone, and there was no dial tone at all, nothing. And I knew there was another phone back in the loading dock, so I walked into the back loading dock, picked up that phone, and that phone was completely dead. Huh. I'm thinking, what the heck's going on? So I came up back up to the front of the store. And, of course, it was one of those nights when you're scaring the crap out of all of us. And uh, I went to the front desk again, and I picked the, line, the phone back up, and every line was busy. They had, I guess, 10 lines on that thing. Every line was lit up. Every line was busy. And I said, well, I've had enough. <laughs> I went outside and I, you know, got my cell phone and called in. But anyway, uh, you know, welcome back. Good to hear from you. Well, thank you very much. Good to hear from you, and take care. Yeah, that's weird. Life is full of uh, weird things that occur, and there simply is no explanation for. I know many of you, if not most of you, have had them occur to you. So I guess that's what makes programs like this, the fact that these things do occur, and there is no explanation, no logical explanation for them at all. Unlike most things that happen in life, every now and then one of these rolls into your life, and when it does, it stops you cold. This is Dark Matter, and you're on the air. Hello. Hi. Hi, it's Roswell's. Thank you. Yes, um, I was uh, wondering if, um, if you would ever consider having Jim Mars or Eric Von Denikin on your um, show one night. Jim Mars, uh, is he is still with us, right? I believe so. I'm, I'm not sure. I just got finished reading his, uh, one of his books a couple of years ago. And I'm not sure if he's still around, but I would think so. Okay. Um, certainly, uh, I've had Jim Mars on uh, in the past. Um, I don't know what his current status is. So, all good suggestions. Yes. Um, also, uh, maybe I'm just like an average average guy. I, I've never experienced anything extraterrestrial, but my mind is open to it. And I, you know, I would like for something like that to happen. Does it happen to like people like um, 
random people, or is it just they have to be somewhere at the right place at the right time? Boy, I, I really hate to level an I don't know at you, but I don't know. I, I've had a few things in my life that have happened, not too many, really weird things, uh, but I was unable to make them repeat. I was unable to control them when they occurred or anything. So they just happened. I, 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 you know, I don't know what to tell you. It doesn't have to be something extraterrestrial. It can be something... And I, I don't really want to go back and tell old stories, but I, I had a case of precognition that was without question. There was no question, but, well, I will tell it. Otherwise, it sounds like baloney, you know, to a new listener. I, I was living in uh, Santa Barbara, California. Here it comes, very quickly. Living in Santa Barbara uh, in a very nice apartment. And I had my car parked out in the street. I came home from work sat on the couch, and uh, was ready to watch, I believe, NBC News, or the nightly news at that time, whatever it was. And I began watching. Curtains were closed. Couldn't see my car. But at the beginning of the newscast, as I was sitting down to watch it, I had this overwhelming, gigantic feeling that somebody's going to hit my car. It came to me almost like, a giant crashing ocean wave. Somebody's going to hit your car. I said some bad words and, and got up and walked across, opened the curtain, peeked out, looked at my car. It was fine. Sat back down to watch the news. Here it came again. Just like crashing ocean waves, somebody's going to hit your car. It was overwhelming. I couldn't ignore it. It was annoying. So I finally got back up again Went over, opened the curtains, and there was a guy walking down the, uh, there was a little uh, pathway. You know, we parked uh, actually on the road there. And there was a little uh, concrete pathway going toward the road. And here's a guy walking down a pathway. So I just stood there. As the news was beginning, I watched this guy walk down the path, got into the car in front of mine, started the engine, put it in reverse, hit my car. (laughs) <laughs> I fell to my knees, literally, honestly, fell to my knees. I was so shocked. Uh, I had shivers going up my spine. I was on my knees, but alert enough, I finally got up, op- opened the sliding glass door and said, I saw, I saw that. He said, I'm stopping, I'm stopping. And there was no big damage. I, I had a little dent. But, uh, boy, was I freaked out. Now, that's a case of precognition. I had no way of of understanding why it came. I didn't make it come. I couldn't make it go away. I couldn't make it happen again. It just happened. That's about the best I can do. That was my big uh, precognitive experience. I don't know whether you've ever had one, but uh, if you have, you know what I'm talking about. Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hello. Hello. Hello, this is uh, Ben. I'm a truck driver. Hi, Ben. Hey, uh, I'd like to tell you about uh, my my experiences. Please do. Well, uh, I grew up in kind of a haunted house, you could say. Um, it all started with uh, things in my closet. I could hear something in my closet every night, and I know you said something about your closet, and I always kept my closet door open. Why? I mean, whatever's in your closet, if there's something in there, keeping the closet door open is just an invitation for it to come, come and get you. Well, it, it never would do. I never would hear anything in the closet if I had the closet door open. But every time I closed that closet door, I would hear something in there. Oh. And I, and I could hear uh, footsteps walking down the hall. And you could, I'd open up the door and there wouldn't be anybody there. And, um, I would, my small sister said people were talking to her, like in her room when nobody was there, just saying her name. Right. And it got, uh, I was actually physically assaulted one time. Really? I I was in my room and, um, I, I stood up. And my head was slammed against my desk, like 
five or six times just over and over, and I, I kept saying, what is going on? And stop, stop. And next thing I know, I'm laying on the floor on my back, like it threw me on my back. Okay, I, I, I've got a couple of questions for you. I mean, that's horrible, but did you, did you, if, you, if you're going to be manipulated in that way, you're going to have to feel a lot of force against your body. Was it like arms that were grabbing your body? Was it some sort of invisible force that was around you? In other words, physically, what did you feel? I didn't, that's, that's a very strange thing. I didn't feel anything. I didn't feel really? any pressure against my head or or just anywhere. I didn't feel anything. I thought I was doing it to myself, but, you know, I'm very consciously saying, what are you doing? Stop this. And uh, next thing you know, I'm just thrown to the floor on my back and just in a daze. And, so and, you then know, you would have to say, you would have to say an invisible force. Yeah, I mean, we, had, we had this ghost there. And everybody knew it. The neighbors, uh, it was on a hill. All the neighbors told us when we moved in that the, the hill was haunted. Um, people could see a woman standing in the window when no one was even there. My brother said he heard the shower running upstairs one time. He went up and he said, Mom, because she wasn't there. And he heard a very strange voice say, Yes, honey. And he freaked out, knew it wasn't Mom, ran outside. Ran up the driveway, and like a few minutes later, my mom had pulled in, or was pulling in the driveway. <laughs> and, um, you know, I would, like, wake up in the middle of the night, and every drawer and door in my bathroom would just be opening and slamming shut, just violently. Oh, brother. Oh, that would be enough for me. Yeah. <laughs> so we finally what, moved out of that place. But. It finally moved out. Okay. Did you Did you warn the people that were moving in? Uh, no, they actually have it on the market <laughs> right now, and uh, so I don't even live there anymore uh, in that town, but it's, it was definitely a creepy place. I appreciate the call, sir. How about the rest of you? Would you warn, if you if you were moving out of a haunted house, uh, there are actually laws now, you know, that uh, require you, require you, they do, uh, to notify somebody if a house is haunted. However, in real life, I would have to say to warn the person who would be buying the house that you've been trying to sell for some time, particularly in a market like this, would probably not be something you would do. So what would you do? Answer, you'd keep your mouth shut. If you wanted to sell your house, you'd keep your mouth shut. And this is how haunted houses are sold. Dark Matter, you are, wait a minute here, now you're on the air. Hi. Hi, Eric. This is William from Texas. Uh, first of all, are you still taking normal open calls, or is this time traveler time? I am. I am until the break. Excellent. And the break is Excellent. coming up pretty soon, and then I'm not going to take normal calls. I'm going to take time traveler calls for a full break. Okay, good. I've been away from my radio for a few minutes. Didn't want to miss it. Uh, first of all, infinity to the power of infinity Roswell's to you. I've been listening to over <laughs> 19 years. Never called in uh, until now. Um, Art, I have a few thoughts regarding the Matthew Alper guest you had on your show a couple weeks ago. Uh, something yes, you said during that show, uh, it sparked a few ideas that I had uh, that might explain okay. something. Sure. Uh, so first of all, um, I hope to kind of explain a possible explanation of the near-death experience and the viewing of different deities during that experience, uh, not necessarily being a proof against God, as Matthew uh, alluded to. Uh, so first of all, let's assume Matthew has some level of correctness. I'm kind of going fast through this because I know time's of the essence. Uh, so <clears throat> with the idea that there is a God part of the brain, let's assume he's correct with that. A yearning to seek out a higher being that created you. Uh, so first of all, I'm not trying to explain the infiniteness of God by comparing him to a mere human uh, being's logic, but this flow kind of helps me explain it and understand it with my feeble mind, uh, actually what might be happening. So let's go with what I've read and heard others say many different times over the years, uh, that there 
uh, where they compare God to being like a computer programmer. Uh, of course, many infinitely times more intelligent and powerful, but essentially you've got source code, and that would be DNA. Could it be explained by DNA? Uh, and of course, all programmers start with source code, they compile it, they have a final product that comes out. The program, if you will, the end result. In this case, it would be a human being uh, based on God's source code. So uh, next, let's consider some recent scientific results that kind of compare the universe as if it was uh, a simulation in like the matrix or a simulation inside a computer. <clears throat> mm -hmm. So again, back to thinking of this like a computer programmer. Uh, by the way, I can send you a lot of research on that. But now, if <clears throat> if you think of God as a programmer, DNA being the source code, the compiled version being a human being, you could think of God giving you a brain, a device. Okay, and this device, this brain, allows you to think and so on and so forth, might very well also have a phone back home to your creator section. Of course, why not? Any good computer programmer or human engineer might build into any device he might make uh, ways to communicate with it. Uh, the device might phone back home to home base, so to speak, uh, sure. telecommunications, equipment, etc. So, again, I'm not trying to equate God's infinite power to a mere mortal human engineer, but in this example, I'm kind of running through this where, for instance, prayer, meditation, uh, that might, that's where you come in, Art. You, you kind of made me think of this when you said the electromagnetic stimulation of the brain. You could kind of consider that as hacking the communication section <laughs> of your brain, your device. Right, Perhaps again, right, right. like any, any hacker would hack an electronic device. And right. that would activate the typical near-death experience, the tunnel, the light, and so on and so forth. Right. Seeing the deity that you're individually familiar with, and that you've studied and learned about it and accepted all of your life. So, of course, the near-death experience occurs, uh, real situations, an accident, you're very sick, so on and so forth. You've hacked the communication area of your brain with electromagnetic stimulation in, in, in the labs, for instance. It may not be your time, you come back, and so on and so forth. Now, the, the last part, back to the programmer analogy. If indeed this all happens to be true in some way, shape, or form, there's a dedicated part of the brain that attempts to fill in with a God concept, that's where the part where you consider it being filled in with a variable. Again, back to computer analogy in, in, a, in a website or you're filling in your first name or your last name, that little first name spot would be, in your case, Art. In my case, it would be William, and so on and so forth. So it's a conceptual variable. So you're activating that part of your brain. It's conceptual. You're seeing the visual deity that you're familiar with. It's filled with your particular deity that you've accepted. And that's what you're seeing, potentially. I mean, I'm just throwing this out there as a possible thought. Uh, and so uh, essentially that would prevent shock. You know, seeing something unfamiliar would be bad. And that all could be very well just part of the programming God gave you in your device when you're phoning home. Okay. I, I appreciate it. So God as a master programmer, why not? The possibility that we're living in some sort of created universe, that we're living in a, in a kind of a matrix. Science is looking at this uh, genuinely hard right now. Did you know that? It's something we could have a lot of discussion about because I don't rule it out. Do you? That we're all kind of walking around in a, in a programmed world that we're not seeing it all as it actually is. Very much like the movie The Matrix. Science is trying to figure out, and I guess they have um, come up with a way to test whether, in fact, we're living in such a world. I don't reject the idea. Um, hard science doesn't reject the idea. Well, maybe some of it does. But it's definitely intriguing. And as this caller said, uh, perhaps we do have that urge that was programmed uh, into us by our Creator. Definite possibility. All right, listen, here's what I'm going to ask. I know it's hard, but I'm going to ask. Everybody hang up. Hang up now. I will open the lines uh, after the next break, I promise, and you'll be able to call back in then. But for now, everybody hang up your phone, and the only people that I want to call are time travelers. Again, I know this is a very hard request to make, and uh, in the future, we'll solve it by having a special line or two. 
so that we can call it out for time travelers or whatever we want. But I would like to try it. So if everybody be kind enough to hang up and only time travelers call, we'll see if it works. We'll give it a try. So hi. Hi. Um, this this happened to me when oh first of all uh, Roswell's in fifty ones. Thank you. Um, this happened to me when I was in high school. I was walking down our main street, which at the time all the stores and stuff were closed. And I rounded I rounded a corner to go down an alley, and I realized that I had forgotten something. And when I came back through the alley, I felt this weird like tingling sensation. And then when I came back on the main street, all of the businesses looked brand new and it, all the cars were like forties cars. They had those interesting fins and all that. Wow. Yes. And as soon, as soon as I started getting scared, I felt that, that feeling again and then suddenly i was back in my own in my own time you pop back yeah so you had a little a little time shift uh actually a big time shift but for a small amount of time yes and this was this was um back when i was in high school around the high school age so it was around 2001 2002 is it the only time this has ever happened to you uh no, no. Um, I've had uh, situations where I've felt like I've gone back like an hour or two, and and um, on the same day. But um, it was never anything anything that big, and it, and it really hasn't happened for a long time. But I don't know if that's that's considered time travel it's not like oh, I mean, it, absolutely, it absolutely is um it was involuntary and it happened for a short time but it absolutely was time travel right. no question about that um that's amazing thank you very much for the call it was a real honor speaking to you sir all right take care uh that's a time shift and albeit a short one yes and uh it's entirely possible that time travel uh, is a function of our brain, that it can be done uh, through our brain. Remember The Island off Michigan? What a movie that was. Anyway, um, hello there. You're on Dark Matter. Hello? Hello. Hi. I'm a time traveler, and I have a gift for everyone. Okay. Um, can you tell us in, in what manner you travel in time or have traveled? I've traveled in a spirit. As a spirit. Uh, okay. All right. My, uh, I, people call me Spirit Walker. All right. And, uh, I haven't done it in a long time. But the gift that I have for everybody that I've learned in my time travels is that if you take a solar cell, you know how everybody needs extra energy now. If you take a solar a solar panel, solar cells, and you bounce it out, you make it as big as you want around, like a record player, and you spin that at 36,000 RPMs, the power will begin to suck into the cell instead of laying there lazily. Wow, let's roll over this again. You said a, a solar cell, you build a solar cell or a group of cells into a round, a round, a round affair. Round shape, perfectly balanced. Right. It would have to have be to, at that, with that kind of revolution. 36,000 36, RPMs. That's wow. about the same speed as a, a router motor, you know, when you, if you're using a router. Right. And you have to gear that up. And once you gear that up, the other half of that, now that will begin to suck the energy in to the cell. This will replace wow. all the reactors. And then, uh, I don't know if you know, okay, the dark matter. May I, uh, you I've got another you question. A couple to. of questions. Hold on. A couple of questions. How big uh, is this thing that you built uh, in, in diameter, let's say? 
okay, the one that I made was almost three feet in diameter. It was just an experimental. Okay. All right, and but you could, used what? And you used what to turn it? I used a router motor. A router motor, okay. Geared, uh, geared and, up. You can. You have to turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off, turn it on, turn it off to get it to build up. Okay. Because if you just turned it on just flat out, it would burn out the motor. Okay. And you have to you have to use parts from a generator where the energy goes through. You have to drill holes through the little little deals in there to get the wires through so that when it spins, it still has the electricity to come out. So it, wow, you'll have it to sounds like you really did build this. Uh, do, you, do you have this diagrammed? Uh, yeah, I do. I was thinking about sending you my book because I'm getting older now, and uh, um, I'm trying to figure out what to do with all my book because I have a book that's probably about four or five inches thick full of stuff that probably people should have. Can I ask where you have traveled, or when you have to when you have traveled? I have traveled as far as back as to the Civil War. God showed me what war, how war is hell. Really, you went back to the Civil War. How about forward in time? Is that possible? Forward in time, you can go forward in time, and I, I have gone forward in time. Um. Can can you tell me how far? I couldn't measure it because when I was traveling in time, it has it just it's just strange to explain it. I couldn't explain it. Okay. Um, but I was able to bring back some technologies with me, and this oh. is one of them. This is one of the technologies. I have a lot more. And I need to get them out. I'd like to send them to you. Yeah, I would so like I to receive them. If okay, I could uh, send it, general listen delivery. To me. Uh, mm -hmm. No, uh, listen. Can you e emails better uh, if you're able to do it? If not, um, you know there there are people who send me things, sir. Just addressed to Art Bell, Prompt, Nevada. I don't know how they get to me. Somebody in the post office recognizes who I am, and they get to me. But I think. Also, sometimes they don't. So here's what I would say. Um, do you have access to email? Oh, well, no, I don't. Hi. My son had it, but he's moving back to Nevada. Okay. You said you're getting older now. Yeah. You, you I'm, don't sound I'm old. old. I'm not, well, I am old, but uh, I'm also disabled. I've been I through see. a lot. I've been through way more than anybody should be, and through all these adventures, and this has made me who I am today. Uh, I just know so much stuff. I just I am I just so so interested in time travel. I okay, you can try a general delivery uh, to me, or just put our bell prompt Nevada and hope for the best. Okay, I'll do I that. I would really look forward to it. Um, What's it like to travel into the past, into a, a time like the Civil War? Well, okay, first off, when you do this, you're automatically just sent there, just like that, bam. And what it was like for me to see the Civil War, I was up in the air just above the, watching the battle, and I had two, one general on one side of me and another general on the other side of me, and they were just watching. And what it was, it was really awful. The battle was, was terrible. Most so ever since, are. ever since I've seen that and witnessed and heard everybody screaming for their mother and father, and yes, it's uh, changed my life. I don't really believe in war anymore. Yeah, most people who've been in it don't. All right, please give it a try. General delivery here, okay? Okay. Uh, thank you very, very much. Oh, f oh, I'm sorry. I thought that was it. Um, fascinating. <laughs> you know, that, that fellow sounded serious to me, and um, his device sounded serious, too. Hello, you're on Dark Matter. Time right now is a commodity that I'm not in possession of, but I, I may, I may be brief, and I may not be as articulate as I'd like to be right now. But 
Uh, I would accept questions from you after I give you a brief introduction. Absolutely. Go ahead. Okay. All right. You had a guest on, I believe it was last night, and uh, this is October 10th, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. Okay. His name was Hogue. I forget his first name. No, Hogue was on earlier in the week. Uh, I believe it was um, Monday night was Hogue. It was the gentleman speaking about Nostradamus. That would be Monday night. Okay, sir. It, today is uh, Thursday. Very well, very well. Well, sir, he made he had a certain thing to say about a certain economic collapse in 2016, and unfortunately that is the case. Um, I What people need to pay attention to is the year 2029. It's time is of the essence here. Our 2029 is what to look forward to. Not look forward to it in a sense of optimism or look forward to it in a sense of prepare yourself. Prepare, prepare yourself for what is about to take hold of humanity as a whole. You're telling me that you have traveled to that year? I am technically within that. What you need to understand, Art, is that time is the most... It's, it's an abstraction, Art. There's a human construct. All times are happening right now. Right now, I am 2009, 2029, and also 2013. So any questions that you may want to put my way, I would be able to answer. But I, I must say that I'm very, I'm very, I'm, I, need, I need to get this information out because there's, there's certain forces that just can, can just cut this off. Like it, it's a, okay, it's, well, it's, you're telling us, you're telling us to look out for 29, 2029. 20, Why? 29. Look to the skies, or look to the skies. There, there are certain astrological. There is an astrological momentum taking place right now, and it is it is of epic proportions. The Mayans, the Mayans were close to their predictions, but given their, given their technology at the time, they they were close, but they got it. They were off by a bit, and there's there's something going on here. Or it is, it is, it is not. It's good and bad at the same time. Or it's good and bad at the same time. Can you can you be more specific? What's going to happen in twenty nine? All, all, all I can really say, Art, is look to the skies. It is it's it's a it is an alignment and it involves human consciousness. What you need to understand, look to I believe a uh, in the in the year twenty thirteen, a man he, he's been on the um, on the History Channel that that that's been on the TV that's broadcast to the uh, televisions across the world. Uh, he's his name is John Anthony West. He does he does work with Egypt Egyptology. I so, I know him. I know him. Have you had him on your show before? Art? I have. Yes. I would I would greatly recommend having him on your show in the near future. He is all right. Well, I I appreciate the suggestion for a guest, but if we're going to have time travelers and you're going to suggest a year to me and say look to the sky, I want specifics. Hello, you're on the air. Art. Yes. How are you doing, man? I'm doing fine, sir. Awesome, man. This is uh, Mike from Phoenix, otherwise known as iPokesmot, and um, I run your parody Twitter account um, off on the Twitter space. Are and, you a uh, time traveler? Yes, I am, sir. I remember um, one thing you mentioned on one of your previous shows. You had a dream where you experienced the life of other people. And um, I've had plenty of those. Um, it, it's weird, you know. You, you know, you go into the dream, and um, you, you know, it, it, it's like. To where have you? To when have you time traveled, please? In my dreams. In your dreams. Yes, sir. So, so not not in, not in full waking life. You've never tri- time traveled in waking life. Well, that's a matter of uh, perspective. Um, but, you know, like you said in your previous shows, um, you know, it's like you, you know who you are in, uh, like another person, um, uh, another life, you know, you can name everything that happened and, um, you know, I'm just wondering, um, what else you have to say about that? You know, because what, I, what I have to say, okay, well, I, I'm moving on because I'm looking for time travelers who are going to tell me things, not ask me things. You're on the air. This is Dark Matter. Hello. Art Bell, Mega Roswell, Steve. How are you tonight? 
Oh, quite well, sir. Thank you. Are you a time traveler? Well, I have a time shifting experience for you that I'd like to share. That'll uh, work. This was back on eleven eleven. Uh, actually, I called and spoke to you a couple weeks ago um, about my little eleven eleven adventure. But one of the things that uh, we kind of came to this this group of indigos that I went and I got to know really well. Uh, we all kind of reached a conclusion that uh, we felt that the whole twenty twelve enigma was really that the na- nature of time itself was changing, and that, uh, that it was being more fluidic and easily change just like pressure levels. Um, going down to Sedona, traveling there by car, it took me 17 hours. Coming back, it took 12. Same route, same speeds. So uh, it was kind of a confirmation for me. One of the local Sedona people that I met actually gave me a branch uh, that I put in the back seat to take home as a souvenir. And on the way back, that thing was just jittering in the back seat, just shaking and I don't know if it was a flux capacitor or what, but there was some uh, Sedona portal energy that followed me home that really did kind of reinforce that that standpoint that uh, the nature of time itself is is changing, and we're going to be seeing a lot more of that. That it's uh, a lot more fluid than people understand. So, okay, all right. Thank you very much for the call, and and take care. I'm not sure that qualifies, and I'm not sure it doesn't. Uh, you're on dark matter. Hello. Hi, hey, Art. It's a great show. I love it. I can't believe I'm calling, but uh, I was in my late teens. I'm 45 now, and I'm on the subway, and I'm counting down the stops. You know, I'm paying attention. I'm getting off at the last stop in the line. And uh, I just stopped paying attention for a little while. And then I looked up, and I was I had gone back like three or four stops. Uh-huh. And, uh, and and I, right away, I, I kind of sat up and... and looked at the map that was up there and I looked at the stops and I went and counted through and I, I just it was just an alarming feeling, you know. Did you feel anything different? I didn't notice that I had lost any time or anything like that. It's just it just I had gone back a couple stops and it, I kinda of did a little reset, it seemed like. I, I never had an experience like that and again just Okay, that's what so happened. so you, there was no permanent shift. Uh, there was a temporary shift. You went bouncing back or something, right? No, like I, like if it was supposed to say take me an hour to run the whole line, I, right. I I think it took me an hour. Like I don't see that I lost or gained any time. But like right. there was it was it's the, it's the Toronto um, subway system. So I'm like going through the stops. Okay, Jane, Ovington, Old Mill, or whatever. And then, you know, went through three stops that I wasn't looking at. And then say, I'm, I'm back like three or four stops and, and then like kind of went through the stops again. You know? Okay. Uh, I think I've got it. Uh, but you were still in the same time frame. So it was sort of a mind trick. Uh, is dark matter and you're on the air. Hi. Hello. Hello. Hey, Art. Uh, Roswell's name's John. Thank you. I had an unusual experience. Um, it was like a waking dream. I, like you, have always been interested in time travel. And, uh, well, the way it went down was uh, these fellows that, I guess you could say they exist somewhere in between the universes. And they were explaining to me how the time travel actually works. And these guys are basically there to make sure that, you know, things go according to plan. Um, And what they do is they will pull a certain individual from one universe and have them go to another universe to time travel because if you time travel in the universe you are from, it doesn't really work because you are altering your own timeline and then it's automatically reset. Did you experience this yourself? Yeah, they took me to some place. It was like, I don't know any other way to explain it. It was just like uh, an energy, sort of like they had this white hair that sort of glowed. They looked like humans. Um, And it was a a white area, but you couldn't see anything past maybe like 20 or 30 yards. It was just like white. Mm -hmm. And um, they were uh, explaining that if I was to time travel in my own own universe, that anything that I would do, 
uh, would not really work out because uh, I'm from that one. They, they would have to take somebody else from another universe and bring them here. And I guess these guys are in between, so they must be really old or not old at all. I don't know if time even works there, however it works. But, yeah, that was what it was, uh, that was how it was explained to me. Well, that's that's quite a thing to have to explain uh, to anybody, and it it. But again, getting back to this, you you were elsewhere or else when, I guess is the way to put it. Yes, uh, I have no idea how to explain where it was, other than the fact that it wasn't where I was prior Supposed to, to be. Yeah. All right. All right, got it. I think. Thank you. Thank you very much, and take care, uh, time traveler. Uh, I hope you're a time traveler. Hello. Yes. How are you tonight, sir? Uh, just fine. I'm a trucker, and I have a bizarre situation that happened to me. I actually jumped forward in time almost an hour, and I have proof that it happened. Okay. Um, I was coming out of Atlanta on a night run going to Miami. I come across the border into Florida, and I started getting some really bad tunnel vision, and I didn't know what. I thought maybe I was, it was a medical issue or I was something was going bizarre with me, so I put the flashers on, geared her down, and got her off to the side of the road. Right. I felt okay, so I feel okay, let's head on down. So I get down to my drop down in Miami, and I'm almost an hour early. Now, this run normally takes me ten and a half hours to make the run. I yes, make sir. the same fuel stop every day, going down and back. Well, I... You know, I didn't know what to make of it. I, I didn't really think nothing of it until I went to, to take down the information. I have a commercial GPS on my truck because I record right. my miles and fuel miles and all that off it. I, right, sta- right. I saved it on my GPS. This happened 72,207 miles ago, and it showed my average speed on the run 62 miles an hour, and I had a peak speed of 107.3 miles an hour on this truck. Oh, my goodness. Now, I got a Cat C-15 in this truck, but there ain't no way this thing is going to do no 107 mile an hour. Now, I I got thinking about it. With a GPS, it isn't registered speed by motion. It's by points off a satellite. Yes, sir. And I really believe that when I hit that tunnel vision, it threw me forward damn near an hour. Wow. And um, I mean, I will never erase that. I have on my GPS forever. I got three different uh, fields for route information. I look at that every night because I make the same run every night. And every time I get to the point where I had that tunnel vision, I get freaked out. That's pretty pretty convincing, actually. I really appreciate the story. And if I, I do the same thing, I keep it forever. All right, sir. It's nothing else. It is a matrix, and I get one of those, uh, you know, deja vu moments. I hear you. Quite a story. Thank you. Have a good and, day. Uh, and take care. Wow. Uh, hi there. You're on the air. This is Dark Matter. Hello, Art. Hello. Hey. hey. Oh, um, Mega Roswell. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, I've been listening to you since... Uh, 1996, 97, I guess. Yes, sir. Are you a time traveler? I would say I had a time travel experience, possibly. When I was in the Navy back in 92, um, I used to drive back to Maryland quite frequently from uh, Norfolk. And I went, I was around uh, Waldorf, Maryland at the time, and uh, I usually, where Highway 5 and 301 are uh, run together, 301 splits off on a ramp and continues up. When I went off on that ramp, um, I continued up, and I should have hit a red light around Brandywine Road, and I ended up, I was, I ended up driving, I I was driving, I was kind of confused there for a second, I I came up on a house, and I made it, I was like, this is, uh, I'm lost, this is weird, I figured I was in Waldorf, Maryland somewhere, I wasn't thinking, and I turned out and I, I, I went to the end of that road and at a stop sign turned right and I went down that road and I was on uh, US one around uh, Dumfries, Virginia. <laughs> so um, if you do something like uh, you know there there's a couple uh, rivers you know you got the Potomac River and all that and I mean that's about you know 
between the two, that's over an hour drive away. I was kind of, I was really confused for a little bit, and it took me a while to figure out where I was when I ended up on uh, Highway 9, you know? I mean, on uh, Highway 1, US 1, and ended up going home that way. I went over the Woodrow Wilson Bridge and everything, you know, going all the way back up to where I used to live in Maryland. So, uh, uh, okay, well, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that except to accept the story and say thank you. Yeah, I always wanted to tell you that story, so there you go. <laughs> uh, you have done so. Thank you very much. Going hello. Once. Yes, hello. hello. How are you? Art, I'm so uh, happy that you're back on the air. Thank you. Um, I, I'm really excited that I got in, actually. I um, actually contacted you many years ago by email, and if don't say anything on, on the air, but you might remember, I asked you if you could help me find somebody in the Philippines. You responded something like, you know, there's so many million people in the Philippines, but thank you. And so we left it at that. Yes. I don't know if that, if that rings any bells or not. It but, does. I remember, yes. Okay. Um, I... I I was in a situation where I was tortured back in the days, so I had started. I had started doing um, meditation um, maybe a year or two ago. I found this astral projection uh, thing on YouTube. I started toying around with it, and I, I think this is time travel. Um, I, I I'm almost positive the year's 2050. Well, I know the year's 2050, and it's so cool. I, I, I can't, I can't see my, you know, when I put my hand out in front of me, I can't, I can't really see it, but it, it, it's almost translucent, but I was in a, um, personal vehicle. Okay. For you stock people out there, it's called personal vehicle technology corporation. Buy that stock. I don't know. I don't know when the company started. Um, where where I was at, there, there's no private vehicle. Everything is this personal uh, vehicle transportation. And you're saying I mean, this is in the future. This is 2050. 2050 the reason, in the future. The reason I was fortunate is because where I was, I was in one of these little personal vehicle uh, transportation devices. And there were two gentlemen in it, and they sat around a round table, you know, reading the paper, drinking coffee, and they had a little, you know, TV on. Everything okay, how, I, I, I'm sorry, but I, I really want to ask, how did you get there or to that time? I, you know, I, I'm not really sure. It, it, it started with this astral projection stuff that I was listening to. I listened to it, you know, maybe a couple times a, a day. And then you yeah. were actually physically in a, a, a in a different time, in a different place. In this astral projection thing, it, it talks to you about, you know, what, you know, how how do you want, how do you want to feel about yourself, and where do you see yourself in the future? And that's kind of where where I started getting into it as well. Where do I see myself down the road? And this is yeah, I mean, it it was so bizarre and yet it's so exciting. Um, um, the, the reason I, 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 I know quite a bit of information is because they had like a little tell, these guys are obviously businessmen, um, mm -hmm. but they had like a little monitor and, you know, the best I could correlate it to is, you know, they have like, like the Fox business news in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so I was getting a lot of information there. And that was one of the things that I saw was this, this, uh, you know, personal vehicle thing. Um, All right. Well, that's that's quite a tip. <laughs> you know, if it's true, that's quite a tip. Hey, I thank you a lot. And oh, the, the other thing too, I'm going to try and do while while the show is on tonight. Um, the, the the only big problem that I, I I found was that the air seemed to be really hard for me to breathe. So I couldn't. I, I wasn't able to stay there very long. And maybe it was just that I was freaking out, but. I'm going to try and um, right there where you're sitting, um, by the way, I think you have it's either an old shirt or a stained shirt, but it's I'm going to try. stained. I always spill coffee on myself. I am going to try and 
move a paper or tip something over in the next hour. Mm, and if, if it works, don't if it tip works, anything help. over. I do okay, that on my <laughs> own. All right, I'll look for it. Well, if, I'll it happens, for it. I, if it happens, let people know. It's your fault. That's what it'll be. Your fault. All right. I'll thank you that. very much. Uh, Twenty fifty, huh? Wow. Well. One thing I'll say about that guy is if you're going to be time traveling and you're going to the future, the business network, Fox or otherwise, would definitely be what you'd want to watch. Personal vehicle tip. Personal transportation thing tip. Buy the stock now. <laughs> Hi there. You're on the air. This is Dark Matter. Mr. Bell, Mega Roswell, see you, sir. Thank you. Um, look, I just want that trucker from Georgia to know he's not alone. Um, I'm a trucker as well, and the, the company I work for, we deliver for a large retail chain. I'm not going to say the trucking company. I'm not going to say what the retail chain is. Yes, sir. But we deliver, we deliver grocery goods uh, overnight, and um, normally I do between one and two runs a night. Mm -hmm. Well. This past February, I was on, I finished my second run, and I still had not, uh, about four and a half hours left on my, my DOT clock. And uh, they said, here, you've got to take this one down to uh, Camden and Dover, Delaware. Uh, and I, I, I remember I said to my, my supervisor, I said, there's, there's no way I'm going to make it. It's not possible. Mm -hmm. There's no because it had to be. It, this was at three a.m. They hand me the paperwork and tell me it has to be there at my five. <laughs> we all knew it was not going to happen. Right. We're 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 located in central Pennsylvania. There's there's no possible way for it to happen. So, but I took the run. I figured, okay, better late than never. At least they'll right. have their products. Right. Um. Started my run, and it, the one thing I noticed was I could not get warm. I had the heater blaring in the truck. Um, my whole body just, just tingled and it, it was a weird feeling. And, um, the other thing I noticed, there's a couple other things I noticed was there was no other traffic on the road, which is weird wow. because I had to take the Pennsylvania turnpike and normally that's jammed around Philadelphia. Well, around of course, the time I, I would say that. that's really weird. Yes. And the other thing was. My truck's governed at, at 61 and a half miles an hour, and normally I can feel it get up on the turbo and start pulling. Right. It would not do that to save my life. I mean, I'm, I'm calling this truck everything but the color it is, <laughs> you know, and, and cursing it out. <clears throat> Anyways, I, I get to, to, the, to the stop in Camden that I've got to be there by 5, hit the dock, pull the brakes, Send my my arrived call into in my my dispatcher. Not even thirty seconds later, my cell phone's going off, and he's cursing me out. Would you quit screwing around? And he he stopped himself in, in mid sentence. He was about to tell me get going and, and get there. He goes, "How the hell did you get there on time?" I go, oh my "God." I, I told him, I said, "Dude, I don't I don't know what's going on. It's my my GPS has got to be screwed up because it's saying it's only four thirty. There's no possible way it's four thirty. He goes, "Dude, it's four thirty." I, I mean, I was I was completely <laughs> shocked. I don't I don't know yes. how I made it from Hazleton, Pennsylvania, to Camden, Delaware, in you know less than an hour and a half. I don't know how it happened, and then I I I've never I, I haven't had it happen since. <clears throat> but the the other bizarre part was I I parked at the, my Dover stop, which was right up the road, and uh, later that day. Um, actually, just as soon as my head hit the pillow, my cell phone went off again, and it was my aunt telling me that my father had passed. Wow. So I, I don't know if it was Dad helping me out or, or, or what, but, I mean, it was it was the most bizarre feeling I've ever had, and and it, it, it's, it's kind of an eerie feeling every time I, I have to make the Camden run now. Uh, you I, know, I'm, I, I'm, yep. I so totally hear you, buddy. Thank you for the story. The impossible, right? The impossible. And yet it happened. People have these things in their life, uh, and they do, they do happen. I know. I had one. So did he. Hello. Uh, you're on Dark Matter. Good evening. 
Hello. Hello. Yeah. Hey, uh, I, okay, I have like a time skip over story. Okay, I walked to work. So, okay. Sorry, go ahead. That's all right. No, no, no. Go. Okay. I walk to work uh, every day. Well, a couple weeks ago, I was walking to work and I had just gotten ready for work and everything. And I started walking. I checked my clock. It says that I get there an hour early all the time, have my coffee or whatever. Right. And, uh, I'm walking at 7.30. Well, I'm supposed to be there at 9. Well, I'm like, okay. I look at the clock, and I'm walking, walking to get there. It only takes about 15 minutes or so. Okay. So I get there, and everybody's like, you're late. And I'm like, wait, what are you talking about? I look at the clock, and it's 9 o'clock. Somehow I skipped over that hour somewhere. Wow. And I have no <laughs> idea how that happened. You didn't? Uh, I mean, you were you, you were walking? Yeah, yes. I was walking. And you skipped an hour. Somehow I yeah, so now I lost an hour. It was like 9 o'clock, and I, used, I was, should have gotten there at 8. <laughs> Boy, that's weird. Yeah, very bizarre. You're like, obviously never not the only one. I know, right? <laughs> so no, everybody's right, like, well, you. thank you. Right, thank right. you. Um, not the only one, obviously. A lot of that's going on out there. A lot of this skipping or missing. And that certainly is time movement, isn't it? Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hi. Hey, Art Bell, Mega Roswell. Thank you. I, I have been waiting for years to thank you. Uh, for a minute there, I thought you were Edna. No, I'm sorry. Everybody says I'm everybody <laughs> else, but uh, last I checked, uh, my name is Shirley. I'm a okay, truck driver. Shirley. And back in 89, when you were still back on AM radio, and yes, I had to hunt from station to station... Right. Well, I was in Ohio. It's 55 mile an hour speed limit for trucks. I had lost you, and I was trying to find you. And I looked in my mirror, and blue, blue, blue. I got pulled over. The cop right. says, what were you doing? I said, I lost Art Bell. I'm trying to listen to him. He says, oh, my God, my grandmother loves you. And he says, come back to my squad car, and we'll find it. So we went back to the squad car, and he found us. <laughs> Then gave me the channel to look for, and he, I said, okay, well, give me the ticket. He says, I can't get you a ticket. He says, my <laughs> grandmother would kill me if I got myself <laughs> in trouble. That's funny. So That's I really just wanted funny. to tell you I'm so glad you're on Sirius because now I can listen to you and I don't have to hunt for you anymore. That's right. One channel, coast to coast to coast, baby. And let me tell you, it is programmed on it, and thank you for being the best of the best of the best. <laughs> That's very kind. Thank you so much. What a nice story. And then he did not give her the ticket. You know, um, I went to visit Bob Crane. I, I've got to tell you this little story. This is one where I did get the ticket. I went to visit Bob Crane before I came on the air. We are going to go have a little vacation, right? So we packed the family in the car, and off we go to uh, Northern California. And I had been driving for, hmm, I'm going to guess, 13 hours. 13, 14 hours, somewhere in there. And I was really tired, but it was late. It was dark. We were within a couple hours of Bob's house. So I pulled over into a rest area. And we had some coffee. I got out of the car, walked around a little bit. Uh, this is getting up into, you know, solid redwood uh, country up there, the big trees. And so got back in the car from the rest area. Uh, the sign at the end of the rest area said 7% grade. So I was just, <laughs> just to put the seatbelt on, we were driving. Um, we started down the hill, and I was getting organized as we went down the hill. Well, you know, I've got a nice new car, and it's, it's supposed to be a controlled speed, but it's not. At least not when you're on a 7% grade. So down we go. By the time I'm nearing the bottom of the hill, I see the lights behind me. Pulls me over. And, oh, baby, I got a ticket. 
I sure got a ticket. Now, he didn't write it for as fast as I was actually going, but I thought, you know, it just doesn't seem right. I mean, here I am coming out of, I've been driving a long time, coming out of a rest area, hit a 7% grade. My car doesn't hold speed uh, on a 7% grade. It lets go, which it did. I deserve the ticket. But um, Asia, sitting in the back seat in her little chair, uh, just couldn't resist. Daddy got a ticket. Daddy got a ticket. Daddy. She was so happy to see the cop. Daddy got a ticket. You're on the air. It's Dark Matter. Hello. Hi, guys. Hey there. How are you? Um, is- surviving. I am glad to hear it. My name is Kristen, and I'm calling from, I don't even know, my husband and I are on a cross-country trip, and ah. we're due north of Elka right now, going cross-country. All right, watch your speed. Yeah, Gordon Lightfoot, baby, it's all right. That was a good <laughs> one. <laughs> yes, <indeed. laughs> I'm with you on the music. Hey, I was calling to, I wanted to share an experience that my husband and I had, and get your take on it. it yes, uh, ma'am. This happened about a year and a half ago, and there's, uh, <laughs> excuse me, out in San Bernardino County, there's a place where we go, and it's in the mountains there. We gather medicine um, or, you know, gather some things that we need for ceremonial purposes. And on the road where we uh, where we go to do this, the layout of the land is kind of significant, so let me explain it to you briefly. Um, it's it's a wide open road and it's a dead end at one. You can see in either direction from the hill. You take a dirt road, like a T shaped to go up. Uh, we walk up this dirt path up the hill to where we go to gather this stuff. And, uh, I'm, we're up there picking the medicine and my husband and the dog are on one side. I'm on the other side and my bag gets full. And so I go back down the, the dirt road down to where our van is parked on the main street. Right. And just before I get there, it, and mind you, you can see in either direction. Right. Where'd you go? Oh. Oh, what a shame. We lost her. Um, that's the nature of cell phones, I'm sorry to say. You're on the air. This is Dark Matter. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello, Art. Hi. Oh my. This <laughs> this is Marianne calling from Blairstown, New Jersey. Welcome. The Roswell View. Thank you. Uh I had a question about my cats. Uh I have two lovely cats who are both Geminis. And they're they're large Maine coon cats. And I asked George Nori about this recently, and he didn't know anything. And I said, uh, I want to find an astrologer who can do a reading for my cat. And he well, didn't George, know. George, uh, I think he does know some some astrologers actually. He didn't sound uh, like he knew much. <laughs> Maine Coons, uh, that's what my um, my Yeti is, a Maine Coon cat. Uh, oh, but I, I don't know. I, uh-huh, I can't know whether he's a, uh, you know, whether he's a, a Gemini or not. He just bounded into our yard one day, so I don't know his actual month of birth. But I know uh, Geminis are trouble. I know that because I'm one of them. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> uh, sometimes you just have to keep your mouth shut. Hi there. Hi, Art. This is Kristen. We got cut off in the midst of my story. We sure did. <laughs> would you like to hear the rest of it? <laughs> I would. Please proceed. <laughs> okay, so I'm at the part. I gathered medicine. My bag is full. I walk back down to where the van was. A car appears out of nowhere right behind our van, and it's a red car. Um, There's no distinguishing logos or anything. I've never seen a car like it, but it's rather sporty looking. But when okay, it, real it, quick it, now, let's finish up. Okay, Hello? so the car appears out of nowhere, 
spins around, goes around the van. I get a little nervous. I start walking up the hill to my husband. He comes back down to me, and this, this man gets out of the car, and he's honking, 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 starts to walk up the hill. A very odd feeling. It was just really odd. My husband and I go back down the hill towards the van, and he just disappears. Gone. Right. <laughs> Both of us were right there. Yeah, the car, the man, everything, just gone. There was nothing. In it front of your out eyes? Of, in front of our eyes. My, uh, my husband was there, too. Ho, oh, ho, all right, thank you. That's a good one. I have never seen anything or anybody just disappear. That's a pretty good one. Thank you. I'm glad you got to finish the story. That was lucky indeed. Hi there. This is Dark Matter, and you're on the air. Hey, Art. Hey, yes. This is Ron Mann, uh, trucking across Tennessee. Yes, sir. Uh, I was curious. Do you think you'd ever do another story, uh, show on the uh, feral humans? Oh, sure. That was a fascinating topic. Oh, I've never heard another show on it. That, that was had to be back in, what, the late 90s, maybe? Something like oh, that. Oh, that's right. Uh, and, and you know the reason I did it? I, I found somebody because there was a movie about feral humans. And I found it really fascinating that in this, even this modern day and age, uh, actually, America is a lot bigger than you think it is. There's a lot of wild areas. Could a feral exactly. human exist? Yes, they could. And they have. Uh, yes, uh, I, I was talking to someone today uh, about that very thing, about how much uh, wide open space, even here in Tennessee, people think it's all populated. But uh, no. uh, best I remember, uh, wasn't that up around the Red River Gorge area of Kentucky? So it's not it far was. from here anyway. It was, sir. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. I've got to run. I've got to do a break now. If I don't do a break, we're going to be at the end of the show. So, yes, uh, the answer to that is yes. If I find the opportunity to do a show on feral humans... Many hey. Roswells to you. Thank you. Just wanted to say welcome back, and thank you for all the years you kept me going as a law enforcement officer <laughs> at night. And I uh, did I did pull over a car once and gave her a warning because she was listening to your show. Oh, uh, really? Yes, I did. But mm. the reason I called is, is there any more place where I could find information on one of my favorite guests, that Father Malachi Martin? Father Martin has passed away. Yes, I know, but what, didn't he write some books? Oh, yes. Uh, yes, just Google him. Trust me, Google him on, uh, well, where else? Google, and uh, you'll find lots of information on Father Martin. You're on the air, Dark Matter. Hi. Hi, how are you, Art? Just fine. Good. I'm calling from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, a tasty Canadian. All right. <laughs> I've, I've got a story for you. I don't know what it is. Time travel, space travel, I don't know. Try but it that time, on Okay. My friend lives 400 miles away from me. She's a girl, but we're just friends. Nothing romantic. Uh -huh. I, was, I was at home, and I had a couple glasses of wine, and I actually fell asleep on my couch watching a football game, a okay. college football game. So I wake up at 2.30 because the dog jumped on me and, you know, wanted to go outside to do her business. So I did that and went to bed. I get a phone call about 7 o'clock in the morning from my friend Rhonda, and she says to me, why did you leave without telling me you were going? Whoa. And I said, what are you talking about? She says, well, you were here last night, remember? And I go, what? She said, <laughs> I was... I was sitting in my kitchen crying because her and her boyfriend, she had told me, had broken up, and you spent the night comforting me. And I said, Rhonda, Holy I'm at, smoke. I'm at, uh, I'm at, I'm at home. I'm 400 miles away. Right. Said, no, 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 no. You're you're pulling my leg. She said, Now I'm mad at you because now you you're telling me, you know, you don't believe me, and you were here. Anyway, she moved back to my home Holy city. Smoke. Yes. And and get this. I walked into her house to help her move and pack and everything. And when I stepped into her house and I had never been there before, it was right. like, oh, my God, I've been here before. And every hair on my body, it was like somebody dumped cold water on me. And I looked oh and God. I said, I've been here before. I, I've heard college football has a, a strange effect on people, but that that. That's over the top, all right. So, in other words, when you thought you were asleep on that couch, 
you were actually comforting her. Yes. How far away? How far away? 400 miles. 400. And, here, and, and get this. She even said to me, she said, don't you remember about 2.30, you had to take Jesse out for her pee? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Now, I don't know what that, I don't know if that's a ghost story or time travel. And Rhonda and I have talked about this ever since. And it's like, we can't talk about it because it both sends shivers up our spine. I hear you. I don't know what you would call that either, but worthy of being told here on Dark Matter. That's for darn sure. Well, thank you very much, Art, for listening to me and Mega Roswell. Take care, my friend. That is wild. Uh, Dark Matter, Dark Matter, you're on the air. Hello. Hi, Art. Uh, did you realize that um, they have been able to levitate frogs using 16 Tesla units of electromagnetic energy? They've been able to levitate what? Dogs? Frogs. Frogs. Oh, yeah. I've seen uh, frogs levitate. That just blew me away, and it made me think of uh, Maurice Cotterell. I'd really like to see you get him on again. Uh, that'd be fun. Yes, I've seen frogs levitate. It's an amazing thing to see, isn't it? Yeah, I want to take a ride. <laughs> <laughs> um, I take rides every night, my friend. Um, I've got a question about your antenna. Okay, real quick. Okay, real quick. Uh, is it possible that the flow of magnetic energy over the Earth, uh, over such a large uh, conductor as the antenna that you have, generates electricity via the laws of uh, Faraday's laws? Of course it, yes, of course it's possible. I would like some precise measurements uh, made. I'd like to know more about it, whether it could be utilized, whether I could, you know, charge with it, whether I could do something productive with it. I really want the answers myself. Awesome. First time, long time. Have a good night, man. You too, my friend. Take care, and I think we'll do a wrap on this week at that point, or at this point. Uh, it's been a blast, everybody. Open lines always are. You just simply never, ever know what to expect. In the desert. Not when it's midnight in the There's desert. The <laughs> you all have a good night, have a good weekend, and uh, remember, there are replays that go on during the days that I'm gone. Two shows, in fact, every night. We'll sort of mix it up a little for you. So there you have it. Have a good weekend. Well, I can't say that, can I? I'll have a good weekend. If you work tomorrow, you have a great day and then a good weekend. Good night, everybody. Are we running out of time?